Hey everybody, how goes it? We got, oh, what's going on here? What's going on here? Hang on a second. Why is this, oh, I see. This is full screen somehow. I don't know how that happened. Okay, there we go. Yeah, cool. So hi everybody, I have a bunch of little things to do right now. I wanna make, oh cool. Beppo, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, I was just about to make a command out of that. <laughs> How it goes? It sounds like a literal Dutch translation. It is actually something people say, although maybe not super often here. I don't know. Hey, Diamonds. All right, so Adam's new video that he'd like to highlight is from, should be March 13th? Yeah, March 13th. Da, 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 da. How I cured doom scrolling. And the link is here. All right, there we go. Hey Mitch, haven't seen you in a little while. All right, now the today command. So, uh, Adam wants to find a game that he can develop on stream. He's just going to explore some concepts today. Hopefully this ends up being a chill stream and not too intense at how do i link to times and have it be that same time for everybody share time time zone independent there was a site for this and i forgot what it was called uh i don't know oh <laughs> well whatever yesterday was the 12th oh yeah you're right Thank you. What did that command say before this? Tuesday, March 6th. Wait, then I must have messed up that date, right? Whoops, whoops, whoops. What am I doing? Can't show my regular calendar on screen. Yeah, I messed that up. Yeah. It was Tuesday, March 5th is what it should have been. So when I added seven, I was adding seven to the wrong number. All right. Well, anyway, at 3 p.m. today, Adam's time. And what's the time in Seattle? It's UTC minus seven right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. UTC minus seven. Adam will be conducting the first interview on stream. Um, with Amanda, a software engineer at Microsoft. Okay, so lots to this today command. Hey, Ferris. All right, I can't fit all of that in the YouTube one, so I guess we get rid of the at 3 p.m. stuff. Not that anyone's actually typing the today command on YouTube, but now they can. So there's that, and then we have a couple other little things to do. Is it a mock interview? No, so it's more like a talk show style interview. I wonder if I should make that a little clearer. Yeah, it'll be more of a talk show style interview than something like a mock interview than like a hiring interview i guess yeah okay let me update that there we go so i have wanted to start this series for a little while now and it's funny i finally started reaching out to people and i have let's see so amanda will be today and then let me think of how many other people one, two, three, like four to five other people I could reach out to. And so if people, I, I don't ever really know how to get a true gauge of whether people like the content that I'm doing because the people who like it will stay and the people who don't like it leave. But if anyone doesn't like the interview today for whatever reason, or you think I'm a bad interviewer or something, please do let me know because I want to get some feedback on this. It's a segment I want to start. And I want it to be entertaining and informative. So I want to see how we can improve it. So I'm probably going to do at least a few of these and see how they go. If I like it, if other people like it, then cool, we'll just keep doing it. And then eventually we'll need to go farther afield than my, you know, like friends and current contacts. But we're not there yet. <laughs> so start YouTube bot is done. Gifting some points. People helped me yesterday with thumbnail stuff. So I want to recognize that. Hey, Mike, and thanks. Yeah, so if anyone does have any 
questions that they want to ask during the inter they want me to ask during the interview you can post them in this interview questions and topics for amanda um i know there's not too much to go off of here i just said she's a software engineer at microsoft and content creator in her spare time and linked her instagram and TikTok. uh perhaps unfortunately here uh, most of the content she creates is in portuguese <laughs> so there's unless you speak portuguese there's not a lot you can probably ask about ahead of time but um yeah still if you have any questions feel free to ask and i think that's it yeah so uh brazil mentioned yeah yeah <laughs> brazil has been mentioned <laughs> it is brazilian portuguese not european portuguese hey yo mm. so i see the today command has been run over here hopefully it responds Oh, wait, no, it's not going to because I never started the bot. I just said that I did and then I never did. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There we go. All right, let's try running that again. Oh, it just immediately crashed. Address in use 3001. Oh, I was testing something out. But. Wait a second, what? No, how is he in use? What do I have to do? LS of what's the command? Whoops. Wait, bot is now online. No, it's not. Hang on a second. I'm just trying to figure this out. LS of port. I forgot you do this. LS of dash Whoops. I. Let me see something. 3001. It doesn't even say 3001 is in use. Oh, uptime Kuma. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would not have even thought about that. Where is Docker? Here. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's definitely worth a point. Save me the time. Okay. Now let's go start this thing again. Yeah. Glad people are paying attention here. <laughs> Because I'm not. <laughs> All right, let's try that out again. What happened to the keyboard cam? It is currently off because of a problem I had with OBS. Let me also maybe talk about that. Wait, is it? What just happened? Is it not working? Well, that's strange. The light isn't even on. Huh. Hang on a second. Why is that the case? Is this plugged in still? Where are you going, USB? I can't tell where this is going. All right, so why, why you no work? That's strange. That's strange. Did that fix it? No, it lit up and then like immediately went off. What is going on? Video capture? Is there... Oh, okay. So yeah, why... Clearly it's working. Now, why can't I select this? Like, man, this is messed up. All right, well, whatever, I guess I'll have to add it again. Hey, Bannister. Um, maybe we won't have a keyboard camera today. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. And I don't think I want to try to figure this out. Oh, wait, it works when you do that. Whoa. Hey, nice. Cool. Well, who knows what just caused that to happen? <laughs> Strange. Digging the all black shirt looks very sharp. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Might be a bit off topic. 
What do you think of the new Devin AI software engineer? I haven't actually looked at it. All I saw was the tweet saying it exists. But yeah, I haven't seen more than that. So I should probably look into it at some point. Um, hey, Dordu. So I wanted to start on this thing. Did I write anything else here? No. Um, let me write this down at the bottom. All right. So design a game. Um, last time we tried this, I came up with something. Oh, where did that go? Let me go find that. Came up with something where it was like you had a town and you turn into NPCs. <laughs> I don't remember. Design documents, game design. I don't even remember where we put this. Town, NPC, retire. Ah, long form, this thing. Okay, yeah. So... The thing that guided us here was that I wanted it to be a long form game. And that's not what the goal is of this stream. I should also probably write this somewhere in here. Uh, become an NPC game. Yeah, anyway, that's what we did last time. What we're gonna do this time is just come up with anything that I am interested in making. So I should make a new document Let me go figure out where this was. Game design, public. Okay, yeah. Mm. All right, I guess I can show, whoops. I guess I can show this on screen. So I like to have the game design folder be green. But how do you do that? There's like a color feature somewhere, right? I know for sure you can change the color of this thing. It's probably in, uh, D oh, there it is, organized. All right, that one. Yeah, sure, cool. Okay, so we're gonna make a new document here. And if anyone doesn't know, by the way, you can just do a shift T and it'll make a new document in a folder. So this will be game design document. <laughs> I don't have a better name for it yet because I don't actually have, whoops, what this is gonna be. Now let's go share this, share with the world and copy link okay and then let's edit the today command one more time reach character limit yeah he's just going to explore some concepts today there that's probably as good as we can do do you not use vim motions because of your custom key maps on your corn no i just I just don't tend to use it, I guess. I don't know. Um, if you mean Vim motions in like a browser or something, yeah, that I could probably start using regardless of whether I use Vim as my main editor. But just in general, I use VS Code. I'm, I just don't tend to use Vim key bindings anywhere. All right, so people have access to this document. I see you both in here. Hello. Uh, I haven't actually done anything yet in it. So let's write something here for background. Um, I I want to make a game. I don't want to well I want to spend maybe I want to spend like less than 3 months on making the game. So not a mega project. And I don't really have any other stipulations other than that I want to be somewhat excited about the game that I make. So as a result, this document is just for planning general ideas and seeing if they converge on anything. So that's it. This is the background of what this stream is entirely about. Um, we're gonna spend, I don't know, like three hours working on this and just see where it goes. And I am Hopeful I can come up with something that I want to do here. There are a lot of ideas I've had over the years, and I could pull from some of those. I think some things I was I was kind of leaning toward doing something multiplayer originally, because I think there are a lot of ideas I want to explore there. 
But then when we looked into this for Godot and just kind of all the networking stuff I did, I think it'd be hard to do. I don't think something being hard to do though is a reason not to do it. So if there's an idea that's multiplayer, that's worthwhile, then great. So how about this? I'll say this. Um, one note, if the game ends up being multiplayer, then I just don't want to uh, have to host scalable servers. E.g. we can't make uh, World of Warcraft, but we could make Terraria, something like that. Not even peer to peer. It doesn't have to be peer to peer. It could be that people host their own servers, but it can't be that I'm hosting all of the servers because then I would have to make this like, you know, I'd have to make a cloud system that scales and I don't want to do that. And I don't want to maintain another multiplayer game like that. Um, whereas there's a lot of, there are a lot of games like Terraria, Stardew Valley, Minecraft, where you just host your own server, people connect to it and it's fine. You just, you know, ship the server with your, uh, with the game that you make. So, and, and this is if, if the game ends up being multiplayer. Yeah, the game doesn't have to be monetized. And if it is, then it can just be a one-time purchase. I don't have any other stipulations. Yeah. Okay, so uh, some ideas that I've thought of. I, I'm going to finally show this stuff that I've been talking about forever that I have purposely not shown. And it's not like super polished or anything. So ready to feast your eyes on this garbage. <laughs> There's a game that I came up with uh, called RP -G. And this sounds like some, you know, Waluigi kind of thing, but it was mostly just, what if you had an RPG where it was just the elements of the game and the entire game just played out basically via progress bars. And so let's go take a look at what I ended up doing. I did not spend a very long time on this, and I also don't even remember how to start this. So let's go find out. Uh, actually, did I make a readme? I did make a readme. Okay, pnpm dev. Yeah, so started. All right, so like I said, this is not anything super impressive. As you can see, the game is very fun. Uh, you play as an internal server error, and you have no controls. Why did that happen? Connection refused to 58178. What? Yeah, what? <laughs> I just tested this the other day. Hmm. <laughs> this is the best game I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it's even trying to connect to. RG58178. It's not. Hmm. I'm going to just try this whole thing again. I don't even have an M file or anything. What did I click? I wonder if I just clicked something wrong. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd pay a monthly sub to play this game. <laughs> All right, so this is this is the game so far. You have an inventory, you click add adventure, and the adventurers are things that would have tasks that you would typically do in an RPG, but it's not shown graphically. And so in this case, uh, they're mining copper, and these are just debug controls to say how fast they're mining. So like, if you wanted this to go at an actual decent speed, so now you can see what's happening here is, uh, let's just do that. Uh, it's mining copper, and every time it finishes, it creates a copper ore. And you can actually give it a priority queue of what it should do. So for example, if it has copper ore in its inventory, you can smelt that. And so now I'm turning ore into bars. Um, and we could add other adventurers, and they could both be doing this. And maybe this one's going super fast, and this one's only responsible for smelting it. And so that's it. That was the kind of idea that we had here. And then battling is also just kind of played out as different bars. Uh, so this is, you know, you see this life bar and an enemy life bar. And I think there was a way of making this go faster. I guess I can just click win. Oops. I don't fully remember. Um, and there were, you know, a couple different areas you could fight, which would just change what you're fighting. Uh, this is an idea that I had, which like, I think this already kind of exists. If you search Steam for like, I don't know, mini RuneScape or something like that, there was something that was not RuneScape itself. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Anyway, I found out about that idea from somewhere. I wasn't trying to replicate what they had done. Um, but I, I like this idea and I think it'd be kind of cool to 
to flesh out. Although I don't know what the point of the game would be. I guess it's an idle game and, you know, do presumably it's some inventory management thing as well. And the idea of like having a bunch of adventurers that you're managing, I thought would be pretty cool. Melvor Idol. It might be that. I think it might have been this, yeah. Yeah, 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 you're right, yep. That's exactly it. 1234. Uh, so this game was a little bit more graphical, but had all the same systems of an RPG. Anyway, that's one idea. So ideas that Adam has already sort of explored. Uh, idle game with you know progress bars for everything rather than graphics. By the way, the one thing I was actually pretty proud of from this game was the loot system. This was pretty, pretty well done. I want to show this. Uh, somewhere in here? I don't actually know where it is. Yeah, I trust the authors. Mm, I probably can't easily show this. Anyway, the, the code was pretty good. It was like easy enough to add new loot tables. I somewhere in this code have... Loot, is this it? I want to find it. <laughs> I don't know where I would have put this, huh? Constants? Loot. Here we go. Data. Yeah. So this is how I made the loot tables. I think this is pretty interesting. So what were these? These were loot table entries. So for example, if I, I could say that a monster would just drop a gem and then there were entries in that loot table of like ruby, sapphire, and diamond, and each of them had a certain chance to drop. And then you could also, well, anyway, it was sort of expressive. This doesn't matter. I'm getting into the whole, I want to show off my code thing. Um, That was one thing. The other thing would require me to go get Godot 3 to show off. Godot 3 Mac OS. Can I get an old version? Previous releases. Problem is I don't know what version this should be. Uh, where did I put the code for this? Code Godot. What do I even call this? Prototype land. Yeah, so this was like sort of based on bot land, which is why I called it prototype land. Let me see if I can find all this. Yeah, I had messed up a bunch of stuff here. We're going to do git reset hard. Git status. Add in sprites myself. And there's a Godot folder. Now, where's the project file? Project.godot. Oh, yeah. Opening in Godot 4 attempts to convert it, but there were like a million problems when I did that. Config version equals 4. What? That seems to suggest that this was done in Godot 4? Is that true? What's in the Godot folder? Hmm. I'm pretty sure I did not use the current version of Godot. And I think if I try opening this, let's just rmrf the .godot folder. Can we do that, by the way? Is there, is that something that gets get ignored? No. So then let's just try opening this. Oh, back to custom engine, man. All right, yeah. Well, if I try opening this, I think it'll tell me what version of Godot was made in. What does it say? Generated by Godot 3.x. Yeah, it doesn't say which version exactly. So I guess we just take the newest version of 3. Where is three on the list? There, 3.6. Those are all betas. Let's download the stable one. Yeah, let's get this. Okay, Mac OS standard. Okay, yeah. Hey Shane. All right, so hopefully we can just launch this directly. Yeah, I think we can. Really like the doom scrolling video? Thank you, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because I thought, I don't know, I sometimes think I don't really have a lot to share on a topic, but I guess just consolidating my thoughts into a video can be worthwhile. That video, for whatever reason, took a lot of energy to make. <laughs> I had a pounding headache by the time I got done, and I was like knocked out the rest of the day. 
maybe I'm just getting sick though. I don't know. <laughs> Not a fan of the thumbnail. Yeah, the thumbnail, I just I just don't feel like making my own thumbnails for that stuff. And so um, Casey had made it and then Casey and Darkstorm both kind of cleaned it up. So you don't have any projects, I don't care about this. We want to import that project I just mentioned. This one gets CD. I have not run this in forever, so I'm not even sure what state I left this in. Yeah, so now it says a bunch of broken dependencies. I need Oryx creatures, world two, and items. I think I have all of these things because I just downloaded this. Oryx, there should be creatures. Maybe this one. What is this? Yeah, it should be this. Okay, so let's go open up the other folder as well. Code, Godot, prototype land, assets, sprites. And it's supposed to be inside Oryx licensed? Yeah. Whoops. Okay, so we paste this over here. And we just call this Oryx creatures. And then we need world two and items. World two. Hmm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't know what world two was supposed to be. I see world here. Oh man, this probably isn't gonna work then, huh? Because this is some like newer version of. I think we'll just try it out. We'll see what happens. Uh, Oryx world two, and then the items, which is presumably this one. Oryx items. Okay, does that work? Oh no, it's super broken. Uh, this had a tile map here, and probably everything is wrong. Tile set isn't even set up. Can I like reload the project? Reload. Yeah, that's messed up. I know what this is supposed to look like, and since it doesn't look like that, there must be something else that I had classified as world two. I don't know what it could be. Maybe tiles? No, it can't be that. Drat. There's there's no way. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure, because like I said, I know what this is supposed to look like. It must have been this. They must have reformatted this somehow. Hmm. Well, maybe I can still kind of show the game. Did I ever do a video covering split ergo keyboards? You mentioned wanting to a while ago. I did just do one a couple weeks ago. Let me find it for you. It was this one. Yeah, but this was specifically on my corn keyboard. So there's the link. Never occurred to me to say, I guess I'll just look at the top three Reddit posts, then I'm done for the day. Yeah, yeah. It, it actually has changed my life a bit. And uh, yeah, I hope it didn't come off as clickbait to other people who, you know, aren't used to my content. What framework am I using to render the other game? This was all just the, this one, this was all just done in TypeScript and HTML. So everything you see here is actually just, you know, buttons in HTML and everything. Um, okay, well, I think this game is not going to render properly because of the world tiles being wrong. But the way this game was supposed to work, and yeah, everything's kind of messed up here. Oh, man. Yeah, you can't really tell from what's happening here. How do I... Oh, I actually made like controls to zoom out and stuff. Um, anyway, it was a different kind of idle game that I was trying to make where you would have battles that you automatically get into. And since you can't really see what's happening, this is probably very confusing um but there'd be this battle arena that would pop up and it was exclusive to like that thing that was fighting so kind of imagine if you were playing an old game like final fantasy uh one nes so yeah like this sort of thing there was a an arena that that would pop up here but this since you were playing an NES game, it like took over the screen and now that's all you saw. So imagine if this just popped up in the world and then these players could fight whatever enemies were there, but there could be many of these arenas open at once. And the way that you fought was actually sort of like a physics-based battle. So you might have an attack that like bounces off of walls and there might be a lot of walls in the arena. And so like, that's a pretty good attack to have. Or maybe there's one that 
I don't know, summons a little critter that goes and attacks the enemy or something like that. Uh, and so I thought what would be cool about that is actually seeing the battles play out. And you can kind of see this happening here, although, like I said, the graphics are all kind of messed up. Um, yeah. This is exactly what you're kicking around in your head for your game, and it's freaking me out. <laughs> Uh, there was some way of like speeding this up too. Yeah, that was the other thing I wanted to do is like you could sort of spend some resource to speed up your your bots that you have. There was some way to add a bot as well. Oh, there we go. E. Okay, so now we would have, yeah, this, this lags the game because apparently it can't handle having, you know, 10 different battles open. But you can see there are a bunch of different arenas going on in the world right now. I don't think I can delete this, but. Uh... Oh, wait, it just kind of went a little bit faster there. Eh, nope, slowing down again. From first glance, seems similar to your RPG bar game. Just to let you know, there will be people who call it a clone. Oh yeah, that's fine. I just want a game that I'm interested in making, not necessarily one that's like totally unique. Let me see what this is. Survive ever increasing pressure of time for as long as you can. A minimalistic incremental game about time management that takes inspiration from roguelite. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you know, let's have that time pressure of the game. I kind of want to make a game that is that's laid back. But I don't know. So idle game with progress bars, uh, idle game with physics based combat, e.g. spells that bounce around the walls. Um, so I've explored those couple of things. I don't know if there's anything else I've done. I, I haven't ever shown either one of those on stream. Yeah, I don't think there was anything else that I had been working on. Then there were like a million design documents that I made for other games. So there are some ideas that I like. <laughs> this is going to sound kind of stupid, but his name struck me last night. API quota of the game. <laughs> but basically, like you connect to some world and you it's all scripted. So you're basically just interfacing with this through you know Python or something. And you can only do so many actions per minute. And so I don't know, you're that's like the structure of the game. Uh, anyway. Build a competitor food.exe. So I was thinking about this too yesterday. Okay, a lot of those kinds of games, um, what do you even call that? Like uh, food prep game, mobile game. Maybe this will show up. Uh, something sort of like this, I guess. Okay, so most people have probably seen a game sort of like this. There are customers and they want certain orders and you need to manage your food prep area and like prepare plates and stuff. This is sort of like Overcooked, I guess. Overcooked had a little bit more of a like uh, an action element and that you had to go between food stations and, you know, stuff would light on fire. I was thinking about what if what if it were a game like this, but instead of preparing food, you were preparing like like a a party of adventurers so just as a just to get this idea across imagine that up top it showed like a fire elemental and so you needed to put together like a frost mage and a tank or something like that and so you piece together this party and you need to outfit them with armor or staves or something and then you produce that perfect party and it goes and destroys the fire elemental and you actually get to like watch that play out i think that could be kind of cool um i think it'd be kind of this same gameplay where it's like, oh, hey, you need three mushrooms. Okay, go to the mushroom station and whatever, prepare them somehow. It'd be like, oh, you need a frost staff. So take a staff from somewhere and imbue it with, with frost power. Kind of like tower defense. Not quite, but I guess it could work like that. Where you're putting this party out there into the, like, the tower defense area and they're defending. I have thought of participating in Ludum Dare, yeah. I will probably not do it anytime soon i'm just kind of just coming up with a game that i want to try out oh this is also in september i guess oh no the next one's in april never mind well anyway i wanted to just kind of see where this takes us overcooked should be required tests before handing out marriage licenses <laughs> yeah yo the api quota game being at google i'm sure youtube would love it 
so sort of explored and then yeah, so this this sort of indicated that I was leaning toward an idle game. And then ideas Adam has wanted to work on or has started thinking about. I guess an overcooked style game, but where you're assembling members of a party. E.g. instead of make a burger with a bun, lettuce, meat, and whatever ketchup it's make a party with a, a rogue with two daggers and a mage with a frost staff then that party goes forth into some battle area and you get to see the fight play out i don't know i, I don't know how this would exactly work hey faceless I see we're partying you bet so there was that idea there was something else oh yeah uh we are one is another idea i had this is like a, a grindy multiplayer game where progress from anyone affects everyone eg you know player number three may increase the entire groups like woodworking level by one when they cut down a tree or something like that so now player number five benefits from it or like all the players benefit from it how am i making burgers join the club <laughs> guild keeper and you choose members of the guild to take on certain quests sort of i kind of wanted it to be like the food prep kind of thing I can't think of the kind of game. I, I guess it's more like this. I, I, there was some, there's some like Android mobile games. If I look in the Play Store, I'll, I'll think of what it is. I was, let's just go to Google Play actually. Yeah. All right. Search for food. Okay. No, these are not. These are not games. It's apps and games. I want to find games. Is it cooking fever? Can I mute this whole site before I? No, it's not this. This is the thing we saw a picture of. There was, oh man, I, I know I've played this on my phone before. The problem, I think mobile games are like, are mostly garbage. They're like monetization nightmares at this point, And you can't just have fun playing a game. It's got to be like, okay, here you can get rid of ads for $10 and you can get like you know the ability to actually have fun playing the game for 10 more dollars and the burger game um yeah it was a burger game quick serve delicious let me see if it was something like this not quite well it, it doesn't really matter the, the point i guess was like you had these different food stations and i search for food prep Problem is this was a game and I just want to find games. I don't know how to do that. It wasn't Cooking Mama. Well, whatever. Yeah. So you had these different food prep stations and you had to kind of manage what are your chefs doing at any given time. So that's sort of like an overcooked, except for an overcooked, you're controlling the chef. So in this game, you were just assigning them to specific tasks like, hey, you're going to be on chopping up this food. And by doing that, now they can't do something else until they're done chopping up the food. And chopping up the food takes, you know, 10 seconds. And so then you upgrade your chefs and oh, now this one can do it in eight seconds. And that's kind of what I was thinking about for this. You're somehow, you're like managing your party assemblers. Uh, what were some other ideas that I had? Let me see, because there were some other things I kind of wanted to explore here. A D and D auto battler. I think that sort of fits into some of these other things that I talked about, like the idle games here. Although I guess if you say D and D specifically, it would follow D and D rules. But the thing I think about D and D rules is that D and D is a game where you apply creative solutions to maybe traditional problems. So like, hey, you're in a cave and you're fighting an orc. 
And the traditional way of solving that is like, okay, I go hit the orc with my sword, right? Uh, but the non-traditional ways are like, oh, I, I throw an oil thing on the ground and, and then cause the orc to ignite itself or I, whatever, knock down a boulder or I push the orc down a hole or something, something like that, where it's like, that's what I think makes D&D unique is that it's played out via words most of the time. So you can do anything that's, that you can articulate. Okay, anyway, let me pull up my other game ideas that I had here. Part of what's making me do this is because I realized I have been coming up with ideas for years and years and years. And even if I were to tackle one of these ideas every six months, I probably won't tackle all of the ideas. And maybe some of these aren't even that good. So we might as well just start kind of thinking about them now. All right, let me go find my game idea note. I do like this idea, by the way. I think this is pretty cool. The problem with this idea is that um, you, if it's a grindy game, so you have to think of like how many players are playing at once. And let's say it's less than five. So now the benefit that you get for the other player, like I'm not going to be able to articulate this right now. Um, how about we start with the, the bigger example? Let's say it's greater than 50. Uh, so now you go raise, you know, your woodworking by one level. Um, other people are probably not going to notice it because you got 50 different people playing. So like they could all be doing this and, and then the amount of progress you're contributing is very little. So like you need to have a small number of players. And if you have a small number of players, uh, there's always this thought that like you could have just been grinding this out yourself. And anyway, I'm not going to. Continued. I, I've articulated this much better in the past to myself in a game design document. This is what we old school people call RPG, not it has stat stuff it's become. Yeah, yeah, actually playing a role. Yeah. Game that has trade between players. So there was another game idea that I thought of a while ago that I don't think would be fun, but uh, it's just called The Auction House. And it's basically just take the auction house out of WoW, and that's the game. And I don't think this could work as a game, but I think it'd be kind of cool. And I actually thought of this last night um, as I was falling asleep. Hey, Ferret, thanks for resubbing. Haven't been able to watch as much as I like, but I always enjoy when I can. Cool, yeah. I hope work eases up for you. Imagine that game having a bar on top with the info of what people are doing. A new objective came up, and the activities shift to that new task. I think that could be a cool way of doing things. Oh yeah, this is what I thought. If you had less than five people is imagine if there's a task that just nobody wants to do. So like in your typical game, you've got you know, battling and fishing and crafting and whatever else. And let's say no one wants to do alchemy. It's like, okay, well too bad. You need to, it's a grindy game. But I guess that's how all games kind of work. It's like if you're playing Stardew Valley and you don't like fishing, I guess you... I don't know, buy fish or something. You just don't get some of the objectives that are needed. <laughs> Escort missions. <laughs> the year is busy, but always downhill from there. You mean downhill as in like it gets better, right? Because otherwise, if you say it's busy and it goes downhill as in like it gets busier. <laughs> yeah, if you want to do alchemy, you'll do alchemy. All right, so where's this other thing that I wrote down? Let's see. I, I like I came up with a couple of ideas in my sleep last night. Yeah, emoji collector. <laughs> this is not a good idea. <laughs> but um, it was sort of like this auction house thing where what if every item in the game was just an emoji and you had like, you know, five rage faces and, you know, 10 thinky faces. And I don't know, somehow this was what the currency of the game was. <laughs> This is, this is definitely a sleep idea. The other idea I came up with in my sleep is actually for an art project that I think would be kind of cool to pursue. So I'm not going to share what that is yet. Are both making semi-wow related projects on stream, yourself and Nate Coates? Well, I don't know for sure that we're going to be doing that sort of project. And like I said, I don't think this game could be fun. So just for a sec, let me talk about this. Um, for those who don't know, the auction house in, in WoW was place to post items just like eBay. And so you had a buyout price 
uh, you had a quantity of the item, so like five healing potions, for example, and you had a bid price. And to be honest, no one probably really uses bidding much anymore. I feel like the game has evolved to just be a buyout price sort of thing. So it was really just a marketplace to post your items. And what would happen is people would find ways to sort of game the auction house because it's an economy just like anything else. So, you know, you get some herb to be able to make potions and then the potions will actually heal your character. So they have some function to them. And so maybe herbs are cheap. And so you buy them all up and you make all the potions and you kind of control the market, but other people see that. And then they go into out in the world and start harvesting herbs. And so this is part of what fed this whole economy. The reason this worked in world of Warcraft is because at the end of all of this, all these items had a purpose to them. So a potion wasn't just, you know, item number 473 with no real value. It was, hey, this heals you. So if you're about to die, use a potion and you won't be dying anymore. And same thing, you'd get, you know, gear like swords and, and shields and whatever else. And people wanted this stuff because they made you better at battling. And they wanted this stuff because it made you faster. If you were to just make a game that's about the auction house, you need some function or some value outside of just this just these uh, nameless items that exist or functionless items. And that's why I don't think it would work as its own game. But I think it'd be cool to have a game that's sort of like that. And that's kind of what led to this thing that we had here is like, okay, well, whatever, you're getting this stuff and maybe this has a purpose somehow. You know, you're you're getting rubies and sapphires and I don't know. Please cheers your drink on screen as soon as you receive cheers. <laughs> Peach rings. <laughs> hey, Stivo, thank you. Yeah, number go up is the core of all games. Have you heard about the Neopets auction house drama? No, I didn't know there was a Neopets auction house. Um, okay, so yeah, that was one thing that I wanted to talk about. And then the other game ideas... Oh, Calic, thanks for resubbing. Uh, by the way, there was there are a lot of my game ideas kind of center around automation and not just because of Botland, I think, but part of it was I think most multiplayer games nowadays, it's hard to combat bots. So I always wonder like, well, what if you just didn't have to combat them? What if you had a game that was about botting? And then you still run into other kinds of problems you'd have. What is this idea? Tuhu platform. Is that even how you pronounce that? Tuhu? Is this even something safe to search for? Because <laughs> I've seen various things pop up. Uh, I don't know. I thought this was a game. I thought it was a genre, actually. Maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about. No, wait. It is a thing. Is it not a genre? I don't, okay, I don't know what I'm talking about here, but it's one of those like bullet avoider games. Where is a good example of this? Yeah, like this. So these games, I don't know when they first started coming out, probably like early 2000s or something, but it was... <laughs> It's probably hard to tell what's going on if you've never seen this kind of game before, but this is like a space shooter kind of game. And there are so many bullets on screen at once that the game is really just about dodging bullets. Like, yes, you're kind of shooting the boss at the same time here, but that doesn't really matter. It was mostly just like survive. And so Ikaruga was one of these games that was fantastic. And this did something a little bit different. This had a concept of you had a shield around your ship and it was either white or it was black. And if it was white, you could absorb white projectiles. And if it was black, you absorb black projectiles. And then you did double damage to the opposite color. So every enemy took on either white or black. And you need to keep swapping between the two. And so sometimes there were bullets that were essentially impossible to dodge. And you had to absorb them instead. And yeah, this is cool. Anyway, what I was thinking is, what if there were a platformer that had this mechanic? And would that even be fun? Not necessarily the, you know, you're the same color as something and absorb it mechanic, but just there's a ton going on on the screen and your point is to platform around. And I think it's unique from the kind of games that I've seen out there. You know, Mario Maker did a whole lot of things with platformers because people just went nuts with them. And so there is that Mario level with uh, fireballs everywhere. 
I wonder if I, whoops, Mario level with fireballs everywhere. Or those fire chains or whatever. I'm not gonna be able to find this. It was in a donkey video. What do you call those fire chains? I don't know. This, wow, that was surprising. Okay, yeah, so this is kind of the closest thing I could think to this. This was one where all of these lines of fire would be rotating around. And so at any given point, there's like arms intersecting with each other of fire all over the stage. I mean, I guess you can just see from these screenshots over here. Um, but this was, this is a lot harder to just react to. It's more like probably memorize the path you're on. Anyway, I wonder if it'd be cool to have a platform like that. Something like a chat wide Factorio game, just all the automation talk made me think about it. So chat wide, uh, there's one thing I don't want to do. I don't want to have this be controlled through Twitch. And so chat wide makes me think, okay, this is a game for people to play on stream. And then we get into the other problem, which is how do you scale this sort of game? And it could be that I'm just running one instance of many and other people can run it too. So Contra, actually, yeah, I guess it would sort of be like Contra, except for the point would mostly be dodging stuff. And in Contra, you are still shooting stuff. LinkedIn hosting Mario. <laughs> it's probably shared on LinkedIn at some point. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. This idea. This idea is hilarious. Let me, let me load this up on my other screen. Hang on a second. Engage privacy mode. I want to show you something, but I need to load up my game ideas thing. Okay. Um, oh, where is it? I just lost it. Yeah, here it is. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If I share this. Oh, it's going to ruin some part of this if I ever do it. But would I ever do this? Oh, uh, this is one of those ideas where, yeah, if you know the sort of spoiler behind it. I, okay, maybe I just won't talk about this. Yeah, never mind. Well, sorry for the teasing about it. Um, there's this other game I had an idea about, a single player game, and I actually kind of like this. Uh, I mentioned this on stream before, Stuck in a Broken Tutorial. So I want to tell a little bit more about what this is. Let me swap where these things are. So a uh, single player story slash comedy game where you're stuck in a bunch of broken tutorials of games, e.g. you start in a platformer, but jumping doesn't actually work and you instead fall through the ground. So the point of the game is to like make your way through the broken tutorials and figure out what led to all of this. Uh, and this has a lot of really interesting properties with it. So because it's stuck in a broken tutorial, it's not necessarily for one game. So like part of it would be a platformer and part of it would be a space shooter and part of it would be an RPG. And so you can kind of bounce all around and you can get, I think, a lot of interesting ideas. And part of this was inspired by those bad UI battles that are online. Like, you know, type in your phone number and it just has a slider from zero to one billion and you you've just had to select your phone number in this list. <laughs> Is it a voice command? Yeah, it's a voice command. Yeah. You ever seen Evil Land? Yeah, I have seen Evil Land. My understanding was this was a game where you went between different sort of eras of gaming. So you start out and you're in the sort of 8-bit era. Yeah. And then you, the graphics sort of evolve as you continue to play it. Uh, this, I guess, is sort of similar. And then it's not just one game style the whole time, but it is the same character across these games. So I like that idea too. Let me see what else I have here. Cause I want to find something that I'm like, you know what? I want to do this.
3D multiplayer building game. Hmm. Sounds a bit like there is no game. Might be good inspiration. There is no game. What is this? Is this on Steam? This one, I guess. Don't go messing these up by clicking everywhere. You don't want to be kicked out of your own video game world, do you? Oh, interesting. Yeah, it'd probably be something sort of like this. Yeah. It's a great game. Could be cool if you're kind of jumping from genre to genre, but if it's a series of puzzles, I don't know how I'd feel versus being the same character. I kind of thought about it as a... I guess like a puzzle comedy game. Um, and I, I think there'd be more of a focus on the the funniness of the puzzles. And I don't have a good example of this exactly. I did write some ideas down. But uh, I don't know. Picture there's a game where you can equip whatever. Sorry, there's a section of this where you're in the RPG tutorial and it's broken. And it's like, hey, equip your sword by dragging it onto your character slot. And you do, and you see your attack go from one to five. And yet your sword is still in your inventory. And it's like, oh, you can equip the sword a second time. And now your attack goes from five to nine. And you equip it a third and a fourth and a fifth. And all of a sudden you've got like 900 attack. And that's how you beat that part of the broken tutorial. So it would be like these puzzles, but I don't think it'd be fun to have that puzzle show up a second time in the game. It's sort of like in, well, maybe, I don't know. It could show up maybe a second time, but I don't want it to have to be like, oh, it's this puzzle again. You know, I think that gets kind of dry if you keep repeating puzzles in a game. Yeah, so example, puzzle, like there's an RPG tutorial and it says to equip your sword. You do and you get, you know, plus five attack, but the sword is still in your inventory you keep equipping it over and over and keep getting more attack power. That's how you end up beating like, that section of the broken tutorial. Yeah. Yeah, and I really like this idea. What's I think kind of unique about this idea from a development perspective is that the design is more so than just this. Like I would really need to spend some time coming up with what are cool ideas that we can then go pursue. And then I think the development of them wouldn't be too bad. The other thing that's kind of nice about this is since there are a bunch of different games, you can basically just find asset packs for everything. And the asset pack is basically like guaranteed to work for your game. And I think that's a really, really interesting property. So I really like this idea. I also, um, this in particular, if you were to just write out these words and not tell me this is a game, this would really resonate with me because for Botland, I was making a tutorial for like, a month or two months or something like that. It was just a very long time and I was struggling with the stupid library I was using. I thought you meant broken like on a physics or reality level rather than a coding bug level. Sort of on the physics and reality level. This whole like what led to all of this was like I have a storyline in mind. But I think, yeah, it's more like it's more like coding bugs. It's more like you have to figure out what those bugs are and how to exploit them. Yeah. Uh, like Amazon warehouse Roomba, the game where you automate the robots in a warehouse to load trucks that come in. Interesting. I wonder what that automation would look like. Cause one of the problems that I think, so this is something, a big learning from Botland is Botland automation was coding bots and any individual bot wasn't too bad but coordination between them was was very tough and it, it was tough for a lot of reasons but part of it is i think you're basically if you think about it in terms of programming you're talking about multi-threading uh scheduling 
and some communication, like inter-process communication. And these are not generally easy beginner topics. And so making a game around this, you would have to abstract enough of this out so that players could find it approachable. And that I think would be pretty tough. Because if you imagine like the way you'd want this to work in real life, imagine you're a warehouse and you have a bunch of robots. You'd want robots to have tasks based on how long it'll take the robot, where they are, and what else they might be doing. And you sort of run into like a traveling salesman problem. And this is NP hard, so you, you wouldn't expect people to come up with a good algorithm to solve it. But like, okay, on the left side of the warehouse, I have six different things that I need. So one robot should go get all six of those. But how do I know that one robot should do that? And anyway, maybe that's not even a problem. Maybe people just kind of have fun playing it. But I, I think it'd be very, very tough for people to interact with that kind of game. Be familiar with the beginner's guide? Less linear, but has that feel? Is it, can you, can you link it? Beginner's guide? I don't know if the typo is intentional. The beginner's guide, narrative video game. Maybe it's this. Lasts about an hour and a half, has no traditional mechanics, no goals or objectives, tells the story of a person struggling to deal with something they do not understand. This is probably... Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so it'd be something along these lines. And I think the less I look at other games, the more I'd be able to come up with kind of unique stuff to do in this game. So I like that idea. Uh, now, what about a Neopets style game? So I never played Neopets. Um, as far as I understand, this was like get pets and like, do you battle them? Do you just raise them? Players earn virtual currency. Wearable items for pets. Buy digital food, toys, other items to keep them happy. Battle dome. Okay. So if I'm understanding this correctly, this is basically like, it's more about the pet collection aspect than what you do with the pets. Tamagotchi about the Flash games, yeah. Hey, Benny. Came in late. Let me take a look at this. Uh, which programming language or engine or framework do you plan to make this in? I I'm just designing a game right now, so I don't really have a plan for developing it yet. I just want to come up with ideas, and if something is interesting enough, then I think we'll figure out the rest. Yeah. And yeah, sure, I'd be happy to give opinions on it. Uh, best idea is to start a project. Oh, to start a project is the one that gives you a thousand more ideas on how to do it. That drives your passion. And this is exactly what Screeps does. Yeah, <laughs> I guess Screeps does the abstraction for that. And thank you, Kuyati Kid. I actually did not make the thumbnail for that video. Um, yeah, I was going to say, just based on how I feel about everything, I think this could be the most interesting right now. But I think... I still want to kind of pursue some of these other ideas that I have. And oh, it's it's break time, actually. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm still taking breaks. So let's go kick this off. Uh, for those on YouTube, you can't play through YouTube. You'll see in a second. But there's the link to Twitch if you do want to play. I'll be back in like three, four minutes, and then we'll continue along this stuff. Is it jump time? It's jump time.
can't help but notice Ember, <laughs> your win um, record zero seven zero. Every time you place in the top three, you placed in second place. <laughs> second streak stays alive. Yeah. All right, close the game. All right, let's look at the. Oh, did that work? Close the game. What's going on? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Naked short. I was leaving the metro and then I saw the billboard clock. It's kind of steampunkish. Matrix of bulbs it caught my attention. Some of the bulbs were failing. So I thought if this was a game with an environment that degraded over time, this would be a good aesthetic. But same degradations are boring. So this is the mechanic. Who is that? I don't know if you're about to type another message. Because I'm happy to react to this, but I, I don't want to do so prematurely. <laughs> There's a third message coming for sure. You created the jump game rewards the winners with hat points. I can't do that. That's not possible. You can't give out points. Twitch doesn't have a way of letting you do that. Someone already suggests getting over it, but with another mechanic like rocker propelled or co-op inputs or a boat with two grappling hook cannons, you have to travel upstream. Uh, no, no one did. I think that's an interesting idea. Like a, a frustrating game. Ideas from chat. Yeah, I think you have to get it to be just the right level of of frustrating. <laughs> For those who haven't seen this, because I want everyone to be at least in the loop about how this works. So getting over it is a game where you play as a man inside a cauldron, I think. <laughs> And the way you play, I, I haven't actually played this, so I'm, I'm doing this kind of based on how I think it works, is I think you like swing the mouse around and it makes this little sledgehammer swing around. And so you kind of like claw yourself onto terrain and then like fling yourself around it. And it is not straightforward. And so you eventually get good enough of these controls and they throw some obstacles at you. And then you start going up. And when you go up, you can fall down. <laughs> and that's kind of the point of this game. It's one of those rage games where like, you know, you, you work your way up to something like this and then you mess up the jump and you fall all the way down and you need to repeat it all. Some people are really into these games, like the frustrating, I don't know what they call them as a genre, like rage fuel games. <laughs> and yeah, other people hate them. It's mouse, yeah. Best part is the narrator making fun of you the whole time. Oh yeah, I don't think I've actually kind of seen it play out. Also, hey, monkey on strike. Just seeing the images makes my blood pressure rise. Yeah. <laughs> Jump King is another one. Jump King. Oh. I thought... I saw a picture of this. I thought this was Shovel Knight. Because it looks like Shovel Knight. Is it made by the same people who made Shovel Knight? Or is it just... No, it doesn't look like it's made by the same people. Doesn't that look like Shovel Knight? I haven't played Shovel Knight either, but I'm pretty sure the character looks... Eh, no, they're not that similar, I guess. Yeah. They're both kind of bluish and have the same helmet style. Oh, that's not saying a lot. Okay, my bad. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So how does this work? Trying to get an idea from just watching this video without audio. Okay, it looks like you hold jump for longer and customize how far you jump. Yeah. Okay. Did I do the jump game with Godot? Yeah. Frustrating nights. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's also games like I Want to Be the Guy, which are, I'd say, a different level of frustrating. Is there a way to show this game? I guess this is the closest thing. So if you were, imagine, I mean, this character is gigantic, but imagine that they're like a regular side character and you're just walking along this edge. You'd be like, oh, nothing's wrong. I'm going to get to here. I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump and I'll go off the screen. But that's not how this kind of game works. The way this game works is you get over to here and this apple falls down and kills you. And so now you're like, okay, well, that apple's going to kill me. So what I'll do is I'll jump around it here. And by jumping now, like a plane shoots out of the left side of the screen and kills you. And so you're like, okay, well, I can't jump or I need to jump and then fall back down too, like really quickly. And so a bunch of unfair stuff happens that it's literally impossible for you to know is going to happen until you've seen it 
And then once you've seen it, now you need to know that the impossible thing's gonna happen and that way you can avoid it. And so this is a different style of frustrating where it's not that you have perfect knowledge. Whereas I'm guessing in a game like Jump King, you probably have perfect knowledge. Like I can see these platforms and I know I can jump to them. I just need the skill level involved for that. And that's, that takes some time. Yeah, um, Benny did type another message. Let me see. Seed slash random seed reaction to time where things change over time and not in a repeatable way. So the player has different ways to interact with the degradation. Cheers for the patience. <laughs> um, okay, so I think the idea of things degrading differently is interesting. I don't know how it's a gameplay mechanic though. So for example, if I look at uh, LED clock, um, the way I kind of understood you saying this is, and I know that you said a steampunkish thing, but still let's imagine this. Uh, if this segment were to d disappear, we'd be left with like, a backwards letter F instead of a three. And then like this segment disappears and now we're left with like a backwards C. And so I think as a, as an environment, I think that's interesting, but as a game, I think you'd need this to be part of gameplay somehow. Like these platforms are actually disappearing, but they're disappearing in different ways or something. And I think that might be tough. Because whenever you have that kind of randomness in a game, you need to plan for what does the success path look like? And with a platformer, it's like, okay, if you can't jump from here to here, then you need some other place to jump. And so you need to make sure that there's always still a way for them to succeed. Maintenance game for people trying to escape their IRL chores list. You know, years ago, I would have been like, that sounds stupid. No one would play a game like that. But then... I saw and played Power Wash Simulator. <laughs> now I know that literally anything can be a game. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, there could be like maintenance simulator and just lights go out and you need to go into your, whatever your warehouse and go find the part and then go over to where it needs to be replaced and you know, unscrew a light bulb and screw another one back in. And people might actually play that game. So yeah, you never know. Director and VP of engineering. Not sure to expect. So they don't have any insight. I think generally, if you've gotten that far, it's it's potentially like, a, hey, we like you. We just want to make sure you're a good fit now. But I don't know. I would. I mean, I guess you said it's later today, so you probably can't ask and say, hey, what should I expect? But for the future, I think it's always reasonable to be like, hey, what does the next step of this interview look like? Okay, let me continue looking through my game ideas that I had over here. All right, arena, deathmatch, medieval, roguelike. It might be cool to have an arena, deathmatch, medieval, roguelike. You all start as your class. And then, oh yeah, this this was a kind of cool idea. I This might already exist, I don't know. But imagine some sort of arena battler. Uh, so you play as whatever, like an archer versus a, a mage or something like that. And so you can shoot arrows and they can, they can cast spells. And so great, whatever. But now imagine you start as like... Um, either archer or mage or warrior and the other person starts as either a summoner versus you know a berserker versus whatever something else i don't know maybe they also get warrior as a selection and so you're slowly building up your character based on these sets of three choices and it's not the same at any given time and so it might force you into some different patterns that you might not want to play as but maybe they're good maybe you get some broken combination of like summoner and then you know you start picking buffs and it's like plus three summon damage versus, uh, you know, life regen versus something else, you know, as your choices. And so this style of like, to use a Hearthstone term, discover your entire loadout. There is no other control in typing. So in building a weapon, you have to type what is printed at the building. When attacking, you have to type that other word. Side effect of gaming is learning to type fast. I always wonder how you balance those sorts of games. Like if you're really good at typing, do you just kind of beat those games on your first playthrough all the time? Or do they say, how skilled are you at the beginning of the game? Or do they take some sort of test as a baseline and you have to improve to do better? And can't you just sort of kind of cheat it anyway by saying that you're worse than you are than you are? I play a lot of boring job simulators. I've been playing on occasionally late at night called Supermarket Simulator where you run a store. What's the gameplay of that? It 
Take care of old and forgotten supermarkets and prepare them for the grand reopening. Repair and renovate everything inside and outside the store. Is there no video? Oh, there isn't. Okay, so painting things, cleaning up trash, yeah, repairing things. Wow. <laughs> Boring job simulators. <laughs> what a genre. That's the wrong game. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. I imagine the actual game is probably still similar to that. I had clicked this one, right? Yeah. It's this one. Okay, I see. Run your own supermarket, stock shelves, set prices, take payments, hire staff, expand and design your store. Oh, man. Yeah, I like, I think the idea of kind of building up your store and everything is pretty interesting. I think doing it by just running what is a job is just kind of strange to me. There are a lot of games that I've tried in the past where they feel like work almost immediately and, and almost without fail, any sort of factory game is like that for me. Factory games feel like work and I hate them. <laughs> I just, I just cannot get into them. And I've tried a bunch of them. I've, yeah, Satisfactory, Factorio, actually maybe not Satisfactory, I don't know. There were, um, God, what was that other game called? Astroneer, I think. I just, I just can't stand them at some point. I'm like, I might as well just be doing my job right now. And I know that's not how the games are set up. And I know people love them. I just, they just feel like work. And so this is a game that doesn't even really try to hide that it's like work. If you worked at a grocery store, you might be setting prices. You might be calculating how much you need to take it. <laughs> In a case where you made it through multiple rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I'm not saying people don't like this stuff. I just, it's, if it's too close to a job, it's not a game I usually want to play. And maybe there's a way to sort of avoid that for a game like this. A farm where you farm the product stock shelves, check out customers. Yeah. Content creator simulator. <laughs> there was some like YouTuber life or something like that, but content creator simulator would be kind of funny. Like you write a video script and an AI has to grade whether it's actually good. And then if it's good, then you start recording. <laughs> and you actually have to say something into your microphone. <laughs> this would be like the stupidest game. But yeah, what if like 600,000 people want to play that? <laughs> then you check your reviews. <laughs> content creator simulator. So like plan your content, have an AI review it. Uh, then, you know, record your videos, speak into the mic, <laughs> plan your upload schedule. This is so bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Well, let me continue looking through what I have here. Yeah, so this idea, whatever I just deleted about the whole multiplayer roguelike deathmatch arena thing, um, that would be a, like, we got to figure out how the net code is going to work for that. I think that would be a little bit tougher. Hmm. Automated mini games. Interesting. Sometimes it's tedious because you're stuck in this loop of let me rebuild everything. Yeah. See a new game title or something? Is this new new or old new? This is new new. We're I've only started typing a bit into this. I, I'm kind of just coming up with high level ideas and just seeing what am I leaning toward without designing the actual mechanics of a game yet. Just make it turn based, then you can forget about the netcode. Yeah, but I don't think turn-based games are generally all that fun. I think for a turn-based game to be fun, the turns need to be strategic enough. So imagine a card game, a collectible card game. Those are like a tried and true formula. And they're some of them aren't exactly turn-based. Like Magic the Gathering, you can interrupt each other and um, you know, slap the cards out of your your opponent's hand and, you know, go tear up their backpack. Uh, so in that sense, it's not really turn-based, but in the actual playing cards sense, it kind of is. And yeah, there's a lot of strategy for that. 
What kind of game are we playing? I just missed the context. Yeah, check out the today command. Yeah, thank you. Um, just imagine content creator simulator where they have to go around to different vacation locations, eat at a restaurant. No, 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 no. It's not eat at a restaurant for free. It's send out messages saying, hey, can I stay at your hotel for free and eat at your restaurant? Uh, I promise we'll get like a thousand people to show up. I've got this many followers on Instagram. And then they reject you and you have to pay for it anyway yourself out of pocket. <laughs> 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 they don't show up you have to pay yep a unique puzzle adventure game where you explore a fascinating world trapped inside a mysterious cube each face displaying a unique scene oh this is pretty cool i like these kind of reality twisting ideas i think anti-chamber is one of the biggest ones for that and I don't even remember how antechamber works. I think I played it for like 30 or 40 minutes. Oh, I think I remember my problem with antechamber. Is this not even what it's called? It's antichamber. Okay, yeah. Um, is this it? Yeah, this is it. I think this is the only game I've ever played that made me dizzy in this genre. Like I can play first person games. I can play VR games. But for whatever reason, I think I got motion sickness from this game. And I don't know what caused that. And I, I just, I could not continue to play, but it seemed fun. This is not even the game I'm thinking of. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What I'm thinking of wasn't just colors, but I don't remember what it was called, but it, it was something I'm not gonna be able to describe it. It's probably something like this game. Oh, Hey Benny, did you type something on YouTube and I ignored it and you came over here? No, it doesn't look like that. Okay. So you're just joining the Twitch thing. Stanley Parable? Mm, no, it wasn't that. Stanley Parable, I don't think I had problems with motion sickness. I played for maybe an hour, and then I think I lost interest. Uh, this seemed like a good game. Don't get me wrong. I sometimes just give up on games very quickly. Okay, so let's see what else I had written here. It's a good thing I'm not showing this on screen because my April Fool's idea is here. Okay, so let's let's see what this idea is because I think this idea could be interesting. What is it? All right, so this was September 13th, an idle game that consists of automated mini games. When I'm picturing the base game is just a character walking around in a room, treasure chests spawn, and the character goes and opens them. It may contain some gold or it might start a mini game. The mini game would open to a dedicated part of the screen. Maybe there are four slots and starts playing itself. Maybe it's like Vampire Survivors or Breakout. The upgrades can get really in-depth. They can be per minigame, or they can affect all games. They change the spawn rate of treasure chests. I think it'd be cool to have collectibles from each of the minigames. I mean, I think this is kind of cool, but I wonder, what are you doing in this game? I wrote that it's an idle game. I mean, maybe it's literally just an idle game. Oh, those are just notes you can add to somebody's name. Like I can click your name and just click the edit button here and then just start typing something. So for Jost, I put the pronunciation. Wait, for this game you mean, Trackly? Because this is this is my design. <laughs> this, this might have been a sleep design. No, no, it was 9, 9 p.m. Couldn't have been when I was sleeping then. Or shouldn't have been when I was sleeping. I like this sort of idea that there are games that are being played out that you don't necessarily need to control that are interesting enough to watch. So I don't know, picture like the like Nokia Snake. Everyone has probably played Snake, but you play it for a bit, you have as much fun as you can have with the game, and then you stop forever, right? So imagine if this were automatically played and there were, you know, like six snakes going through the screen and 10 different apples or something. And, and this was one of the mini games that's being described here. I just, I don't know what this would be exactly. What engine are we developing this in? I'm not actually considering what, how we're developing it yet. I'm just trying to come up with ideas. And maybe I should write that here. Engine slash language. Uh, we're not at that phase yet. I just want to come up with a game that I'm excited about. First. Uh, okay, well, anyway, let's look through some more of these.
Hmm, I was very excited about this next idea when I wrote it down. I guess let's put this up here. The next idea that I had was uh, deck builder auto battler with card durability. <laughs> so cards are simple things like attack your opponent, uh, cast a heal, etc. You form a deck and get in battles. Battles play out automatically based on your draws. Constantly collecting cards. Now we can game you. Adam learns world. If the mini games are linked in some way to perhaps tell a story, it might be interesting. I was thinking this would just be a game mechanic game. No story, no anything else. Just it's almost like it's a mini game itself. Um, this could be an interesting multiplayer game to make. Although this is probably one of those like centralized multiplayer games you'd want to make. And you need to think about how exactly this is working out. I wonder if this could be, this could, I guess, just be the battle mechanic for another game. Oh, that is very interesting. What if this is just the battle mechanic for another game? What if this is the auction house game? <laughs> Would not be a good idea. <laughs> Half serious. So, you know, I always kind of try to poke holes in some of the stuff I do. And, and this is why we're just seeing what am I excited about? But in a game like this, um, you need there to be. There's sort of an average power level of cards, I guess. And so attack your opponent is something that is probably like the most basic card. And maybe cast a heal is pretty basic, too. And maybe there's something like attack two opponents at a time or something like that. And that's more powerful. And so what if you literally just had attack your opponent in your deck times 10? That's your entire deck. You do 10 attacks. The battle, hopefully you win. Maybe you don't. Uh, so there needs to be some strategy. And I guess you'd have to base this on who your opponent is. Like, oh, here's an opponent who can only take one damage at a time. So attacking your opponent is not really the point. It's more about surviving. So you do need more heal spells. And then I think, okay, well, what about the powerful cards? Like if the cards have durability and they're breaking, then you need to be getting new cards all the time. Uh, but I think there's probably something here. If you were to develop this out, I think you could come up with something. In fact, what if... What if some of the cards were for modifying the battle itself? E.g. adding battlers that could be controlled through other cards? Imagine a, imagine cards like summon a warrior for yourself or level up the battler in the sixth position or light the trees on fire in the battlefield. I think some of this stuff could be kind of interesting. Hmm. Then the order of your deck really, really matters, though. What's kind of cool about this is it's an it's an automation game, but instead of you coming up with the instructions in order, you're coming up with the instructions in a random order, which is a neat take on it. And I don't know, are there any deck builder auto battlers out there where the game just plays itself after you formed your deck? I think most of these games, you have some input during the game. And I don't even know if this is a good idea. Like this is something that maybe if we prototype, it could, could either prove or not prove itself. 
I, I think this is a cool idea. I, I think this is another thing I'd like to kind of explore a little bit more. And this one, I think if we pursue this, I would want to spend a bunch of time just coming up with ideas on stream for different mechanics and I don't know, jokes, basically. I think this would be, this is probably the most fun one to do for sure. I, I think I'm leaning toward this, but I, I still just want to spend some time thinking about this stuff. Design again is steps away from traditional themes of conflict, such as battle and fights. Um, I want to do something that's unique enough, but not necessarily in terms of environment. So like, I don't mind if the game has battles, but I wouldn't want it to just be, okay, we're making Pokemon, but different. We'll call it uh, Pal World and we'll, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, we're making Pokemon, but uh, you know, your team has, they're all fighting at the same time or something. It's like, that's not really unique enough. I think this sort of idea is pretty cool. And I think this is something, this deck builder auto battler thing, I think this could be pretty interesting too. TFT is an auto battler. TFT is the same spirit. Uh, team fight tactics. I've never played it, so I don't know how it works. How do you can I mute this? How do you play? Do they have like a getting started thing or something? I just want to see like some rundown of. Okay, how to play. You're facing off against seven other players who are all assembling an ever-changing team of champions across multiple rounds. Auto battler genre got its name because you don't directly control these units. Instead, they fight automatically. Whoa, I don't care. Uh, and it's up to you to build an effective team and choose where to position them to start each round. If you win a round, you'll do damage to their health. The amount of damage you do depends on how many of your champions are still alive. Scales exponentially upward. As your strategy evolves, you need to adapt to your opponents and whittle them down. This is played with seven or eight players. Yes, seven other players. I don't think I knew that. This is an auto battler, but do you use cards for this? Is that what these are at the bottom? No, these look like they might be the champions. Interesting though. Very interesting. Yeah, what if this had many players at once? Okay, there's another idea that I had. Which I think is interesting, but I don't know if it would work here. All right, so it's this idea. So 4v4 then 1v1v1v1. All right, so the way that this works is, imagine you have team A, you have four people, and you have team B, you have four people. And there's round one is just A versus B, so 4v4. Then round two is the winning team turns on each other and it becomes a free-for-all. So now it's 1v1v1v1. So the idea here was, you obviously care about winning in both rounds and in the first round it's pretty straightforward you're just you know you're, you're with a bunch of other players and you're battling some other team but then you want to make sure your team is actually doing as as like poorly as they could be doing by the end of the round so that when you turn on them you can beat them easily so it's like you want to win but you want to like just barely win you want your team to be in like really shoddy shape by the end of it uh, I don't know what that does for the game. <laughs> I think it could be kind of interesting. Champions and items. You build a team with synergy between champions and they auto battle each round. Yeah. Draft mechanic introduces a lot of fun randomness. Yeah. And so I think I would need to think of what the inputs are during the game or in between rounds. Otherwise, it's just who got luckier with their deck. It's like that bike race where the last one across the line wins. Is that is that like a game I could look up? Kind of interesting. Idea is to die, but the NPCs are trying to save you. 
that's that's kind of interesting, but it would probably make for sort of a grim game. Yeah. Also, mechanically, it might play out all that differently from the non-role reversal thing where the NPCs are trying to kill you and you're trying to, you know, live. TFT, there's elements of an RTS where you have to consider the economy. Saving money brings in more money. And when to upgrade to get higher level heroes, really deep game. Yeah, I've I've not played this game, but I, I played something recently that was sort of in the same vein. And they assumed... I, anyway, it doesn't, I'm not going to... I shouldn't be talking about this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that it's a, it's probably a fun game and it's probably got a lot of depth to it. And I should probably at some point check it out. It's an actual race. You have to move fast enough to keep your bike upright without your feet touching the ground, but you have to go slow enough to be the last one across the line. I see. Yeah. So there's the tension that you have. And so with something like this, as an auto battler, it's tough to have it play out the strategy you would need to, to capitalize on this shift from 4v4 to free for all. So I don't know, but the whole deck builder auto battler thing, I think this could be kind of interesting. And I'm picturing there's the I've shown this game a couple times, and I made this a long time ago. Um, is there, hang on, how do I, there was some way. Oh, I don't remember how to do this. Let me go find it on GitHub. Oh no, I don't remember where it is. Yeah, well, there's some screenshots. Maybe I can just show the screenshots. This is it? No, no. Yeah, this is it. Oh, well, this kind of shows it off a little bit, I guess. Anyway, you got in these like large battles. And so here you see eight versus nine and eight of them are dead on this side. And what would happen is battles could combine. And so if another player were like walking down this path, not player, like another computer player were walking down this path, they would just join this fight. And so to some extent, the fights could kind of almost never end because you just have a stream of things coming out of the generators and joining the fights. But I like this idea of imagine if all these were generated by cards and you had these slots. And so, you know, you have a three by three grid and it was like heal the upper left quadrant of the grid. And that's one of your cards. And it's like, well, if you had players in the upper left quadrant of your grid, that's pretty good. If you don't, it might be worthless. And it reminds me of... Uh, Ogre Battle 64 had a really cool mechanic, at least at the time, I thought. You had a 3x3 three three grid that you placed your units on ahead of time. And then depending, your, your players would get into battles on the overworld, so you might be facing each other, in which case how you laid out the grid is how it would play out in the fight. But maybe one player is facing that way, and they start the fight in different directions, and so now your grid rotates and now your players might do different things based on which grid slots they're in. And so it might make it way worse for you. And maybe you work around that by trying to make your, your little battalion here more resilient to the rotations. And anyway, I don't think it ended up being like a big element of the game. It was mostly like just try to do battle head on. Competitive games rely on a meta and defining that as a dev can easily backfire. Yeah, I agree. I think the other thing too is with multiplayer games, it's like you, you need there to be other people playing it. You need uh, you need to probably be adding content, promoting other players to join the game. So even if this idea works as a multiplayer game, I probably need to plan it like it's a single player game or I don't know, something like that. Let's keep going through this. Oh man, this was, ah, oh, there was some show in the nineties. Uh, yeah, I wrote this, a stream game where you win chances to play like in those old TV shows. So like it's a platformer and you could try to make it as, um, try to make it as far in the level as you can. I don't remember which TV shows did this. I can't remember the names of them, but yeah, there were, it was some kids show and i don't remember what they were doing but imagine they're just answering questions and all of a sudden it's like game round and then they got to play a game and they had to get like the higher score takeshi's castle legend of the hidden temple 
I don't think I've seen this. The Legend of the Hidden Temple, maybe. I don't remember them playing a video game for this, though. But maybe it was this. Anyway, I remember... I remember thinking, whatever show it was, that like, oh, this this would be easy. Just get the highest score or something, right? But I don't think it is exactly because you feel all this pressure when you're there. And so this probably can't really work on the stream all that well. But yeah, what if during my breaks instead of Jump Royale, it was you're playing a platformer and you pick up wherever the last person left off? Nick Arcade, maybe it was that? Yeah, I think it was this. <laughs> Oh man, yes, it was this. Oh my god, I have not seen this show in forever. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I just completely forgot about this. They had all those arcade machines laid out there. King of the Monsters. What are these other ones? Super... I can't even read what that says. Oh, Super Ghosts and Goblins? Yeah. I don't know what that one is. And Something Land. What is that? Yeah. Oh, man. I haven't thought about that in forever. I'm going to give you a point for that. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, anyway, that, that was just the idea, was like, what if you had this sort of thing? I don't think it's something necessarily worth doing. Uh, what is this? Probably a bad idea, but I'm writing it down anyway. A stream versus me kind of game called The Struggle. Players have to cooperate to even get like a dollar to spend in the game. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote this down. Like, what, what would they have to do? This is literally the whole idea I wrote down. But I, I sense that there's something here. And I don't know if it's worth developing a bit the the idea, not not actually prototyping it, but just figuring out is there more to this? I don't know what it would even be. Billionaire simulator. Well, the the dollar thing. Ignore the dollar part. It was like to even get you know uh, an item to use in the game or or in game currency. I don't know. That part didn't really matter too much. And the cooperation and filling roles. Yeah, I don't know what I had in mind for that. Anyway, whatever. All right, uh, let's see. Another dream-based idea that would probably never work. What is this? 2D platformer multiplayer racing game. Everyone starts at some point. The goal is to find an exit as quickly as possible. In each round, the world gets harder to traverse. So maybe in the first round, there are just some pits and then various rooms you can start in. You don't know which room will have an easy to find exit. There's some luck involved. I don't know if that's actually fun. But for like hangman in your pinata, people who get hit the most, get the most hits win. This is nine gags. Maybe you don't want to open it on stream, but this is a TV game that I love to watch as a kid. I'll have to take a look at it later. All right, yeah, multiplayer platform where you're supposed to find the exit. I, I don't think I want to do something like that. Oh my God, this idea. I remember writing this down. This is at the end of 2022. Hide and eat. A game where you have a minute to go into the other person's kitchen and raid the fridge. At the end, you get a minute to review your own kitchen and you have to figure out what was hidden and what was eaten. I, I'm not doing this. <laughs> Called Hugo. I don't think I've heard of that. What is this? A multiplayer endless space shooter. 
not going to do that. What's this? I'm looking through uh, the list I have of game ideas is gigantic and I am on May 2022 right now and it goes all the way back to uh 2017. <laughs> the ideas probably get worse as I go back. Interesting. Okay, well if I end up doing this, one of the important things I'm going to have to do uh this one if I do this, I should look through my game ideas. There are several ideas that were similar to this, but I didn't have this in mind exactly. Sounds like it evolved from you trying to do shopping and didn't know what your wife had eaten. I think this was something I maybe designed close to being asleep. Like a lot of game ideas strike me when I'm about to sleep and I'm like, I don't have a bear. I don't have a uh, gauge for whether this is good and so I write it down and I'm like this this could be awesome <laughs> and then I wake up and I'm like what, what was I talking about here <laughs> all right what is this I'm reading through my game ideas on the other screen to see if they're worth talking about on stream Some basic task multitasking game Oh man, this is this is sort of like what I was talking about the other day on stream. <laughs> Long Pong. <laughs> a very rectangular board where like 20 people can connect and randomly get a paddle at an arbitrary point in axis. Maybe they're even on a random team. They can then only move along their axis just like regular Pong. However, things get pretty crazy afterward. You get mana or energy and you can rotate your paddle or move in an arbitrary direction. I don't... Like some of these would be kind of interesting, you know, like what if I said, I'm going to go through every idea and prototype it in its simplest form and just see what ends up happening. And I think that's like, if I were just looking for content here, I would probably do that stuff. So I think it'd be kind of cool to make long pong, <laughs> but I don't think this sounds like a fun game. Chat can spawn their chosen character type to fight them off. They only have one character active and they have different skills. If you're talking about a chat-based game, I don't want to do a chat-based game. That's something I should probably write in this document. Uh, I don't want the game to be chat-based. So nothing like Jump Royale. Yeah. Okay, idea struck me was a gigantic square world. Players are positioned at the corners of a square. They all have a special resource that grows in abundance. Think of the genre first. What do you want to make? Deck builder RPG platform. I'm looking through my old game ideas and just seeing what strikes me. I, I'm heavily leaning toward one of the games already. Because I could do this by starting with just a genre and then thinking about what do I want to make. But I've come up with ideas in the past and I've just never really looked through them again. And so that's kind of what we're ending up doing here. Greed Corp. A social game that resembles a work UI of some sort. You all work for the same company. What is this? Let me, let me read this. This is from 2022. A social game that resembles a work UI. You all work for the same company, but you're trying to rise to the top and embezzle money. You see shipments going in and out and have to redirect them, but other people can audit records and find you out. There'd be bots and humans alike playing the game. It could be a game about role-playing where there are chat rooms for different departments or different companies. You need to figure out how to prevent one person from making like 10 companies and then running everything. Maybe it takes capital to start another company. Maybe it's real money. Companies generate a resource. Still need to stop one person from running like 10 companies. Also needs to be a real-time component to stop people from making all the progress in like two hours. <laughs> oh, this was a cool idea. But this is pretty intense. Terraria, but you progress by getting permanent fixtures on your next copy of the world. 
So for example, the next planet you spawn on has a house, and the one after has a house and 10% of the map revealed. Then maybe you have all the starter gear. I like this idea, but I think like anything when you say, okay, this is a multiplayer game makes it a lot crazier. And if it's just Terraria that I'm recreating, uh, it would also not be that unique. You can only fight the person right and left. So your shape gets smaller or changes based on people at certain intervals. Which game are we talking about here? Are we talking about Long Pong? Are we talking about the thing that I vocalized but never actually copy pasted? Because I, I don't really think there's a way to make this game fun. <laughs> well, maybe there is, but I don't think it's probably worth trying to figure out. I think the way that people experience games nowadays is very... Mm, it's like popularity driven almost. So multiplayer games usually need a player base or else they just kind of die out. Or at least the competitive ones do. I guess cooperative ones, you don't really need a player base, you just need your friends. And so anything like this where you're competing, I feel like we'd probably play it on stream and have some people here and there, but then afterward, what would happen with it? Let me see. Got to make it so they can progress when nobody else is around. What game were you talking about for that? The Terraria thing? And the game someone mentioned about a square and people start in each corner. I meant the same thing, but not a square. Oh, sorry. I missed this, Casey. Not really a game idea. Have you ever seen or played uh, Wild True Learn? I've seen this game. I've not played it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't think you need to have a persistent world with co-op games. Like, picture Stardew Valley, like, wildly successful. It's not like the farm is just running while you're offline. You have to play with your friends. And, like, that's fine. I think that works for that kind of game. So I think you can make a multiplayer co-op game, and I think that'd be totally fine. I think multiplayer competitive games, it's pretty hard to do without throwing a bunch of resources at it because eventually your player, player base will die out, and then the game is just kind of done. It's like, imagine if Botland were still being hosted right now. How many people would be logging into play? <laughs> Probably a small handful. And then you run into a different issue, which is that small handful handful probably represents very skilled players. And so now anyone new who tries to join just gets like stomped by those players. And that'd be tough. Play up style game, but with another thing that isn't cooking, those are super fun. That's one of the things I had written down here. Uh, yeah, an overcooked style game, but where you're assembling members of a party instead of a, make a burger with this stuff, it's make a party with a rogue and a mage, and then they go into battle. I think that could be kind of cool, but I don't know exactly how it would play out. But yeah, now let me see if there's anything else here because I want to look through a couple more of these ideas, and then in the last sort of hour of this game design stuff, I want to. Talk more about whatever seems best so far. Okay, what do we have here? Have any of you ever played a game called Aversion? Is this on Steam? It is on Steam. This game was very interesting. Is it free? No, it's not free. Okay, well then I guess I'll... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to give spoilers. Do they show any spoilers in here? They kind of do. Yeah, they kind of do. All right, well, I'll talk about this. And if you don't want spoilers for a game from 2010, then I guess mute the mute the stream for like the next minute. Um, This game starts out and it looks like just a platformer and it's super bright and cheery and like look at all the colors and yep, you're just jumping on stuff and and then something happens. I don't remember what it is. And the game starts getting darker and darker. And I don't remember what happens because <laughs> this is from 2010. But yeah, it was kind of an interesting idea of like, hey, what this is on the surface is not actually what it is. 
And so yeah, I wrote something down myself here, a game that has to appear to be cutesy and fun, but only does so because it's being watched and you have to uncover the hidden game underneath that they don't want you to see. It's like a less scary aversion. What about something chill like Stardew Valley? I think a game like that would be super cool to make, but I think that in order to make it, you'd have to plan out quite a lot. And I, I think that would generally take a little longer than three months to do. Although maybe so would suck in a broken tutorial. I don't actually know. Chat Royale. Game where players can change the rules. The shell of an idea. Game where you pit everyone's greed against each other. Multiplayer gratuitous game where you all take turns. Oh, this was an idea that I kind of like. A Final Fantasy 1 style RPG that slowly becomes fully automated. Maybe you start with a party of one to four characters, you have to input menu commands, but slowly you unlock automation for everything. Eventually it just becomes an incremental game where battles don't even play out. Maybe fun to prototype as a web game with only basic graphics, no major animations. Battles could start as turn-based or very slow ATB, then go faster, then get skipped altogether. I do like this idea. Because I think... Yeah, I like this idea. I think it essentially shows the evolution of turn-based battling in games. And it does so within one game. And I, I kind of, I don't know if anyone's heard me joke about this before, but I call Final Fantasy 1 a button simulator because that's it. You, you just, at some point, you didn't even really care what you were doing. It was just attack, 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 attack. And you could just hold down the A button the entire time. And sure, there were spells, but like you ran out of spell slots. And I don't know. I don't think it was a very fun game. I think it was a very fun game for the time, but it would not really stand up to the test of time. With that said, some people are still playing the re-releases and stuff and seem to be enjoying it. But yeah, I like this idea. I'll write this down over here. Uh, FF1 style game that slowly becomes automated and then becomes probably incremental. I like this idea. Oh man, listen to this idea. A multiplayer typing test where the keyboard is randomized. On hard mode, you don't even see a graphic with what the layout is, so you have to press each key to figure it out. This is this is like torture for some people, probably. Like imagine if you just started pressing instead of QWERTY, you typed out like this. And you had to remember that that's what it did. And so then when you type out a word, you have to you know, basically press like random keys on your keyboard. <laughs> I had a system where you needed to directly target the enemy you'd miss after that went away is when it went full auto. Yeah, right, 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 right. I am aware of that. But even with that, you could still kind of just hold the A button if you wanted to. Call it keyboard memory. I don't think this game would be fun, though. That's the problem. And if it were fun, I think some people would get very good at this skill. And this skill has no real life value. <laughs> I should say this, it has minimal real life value. You would be able to learn new keyboard layouts very quickly. <laughs> I think this would be cool to do because it wouldn't actually take that long to do. Yeah, you host a website, you connect everyone with web sockets, you send keystrokes across and the server tells you what they've typed and you could see each player typing out a sentence or something. No real life value, just like all games. I think some games have some real life value. And I think this one would too. So yeah, um, I think this would be cool to make, like I said, but just not the kind of thing I'm looking for right now. Uh... What is this? This could be interesting. What is this? We're going back to July of 2021. A Minecraft plugin where you and a bunch of people can beat to compete to build the biggest tower in 20 minutes. Reasons why tower building is appealing. 
There doesn't have to be a natural end if you don't want. Whoever's tower has the highest wins. It's easily visible from anywhere in the world, and it plays into what people are used to. I think you have to get your own designated area. You have to venture out to find blocks to destroy so you can place them in your tower. Maybe build tools so that you can destroy blocks faster. Maybe the height of your tower determines how quickly you get resources. Hmm. Yeah, this could be interesting. Remembering it would be a pain, but sadly a shocking amount of people don't touch type anymore, not really taught anymore, and phones just make the matter worse. I wonder, okay, so the remembering part you don't really need to do. I wrote on hard mode, you wouldn't even see a graphic. But imagine if you did see something like, I don't know, for most people this would probably look foreign to them. So I'll just pull this up. Uh, but yeah, imagine if this is your keyboard all of a sudden, and you actually saw this graphic on screen. And now it says something like type, uh, my favorite game is Super Smash Brothers or something. And so you're like, okay, there's M and there's Y. And so you're trying to figure out where on your keyboard is this. And you type these things. Yeah. Overcooked style game, but about construction. You automate the building bricks. You'd love to make a cheat for that game. Yeah, it'd be pretty easy to do, right? Like, all you need to do is write some client-side thing that you just type out all of the keys on your keyboard, and it figures out what the keystrokes are, and then it now knows the mapping, and it you know, just automates it for you. Yeah. And that's part of the reason. It's another thing where it's like, how would you stop this? And so you could never, if you were like, I want to make a game, I want this to be paid. People pay five bucks a month. They join, you know, keyboard typing club <laughs> and, and then somebody just cheats their way through it. I guess if you're paying money, you could just ban them and then they have to pay more money to sign up again. But it's probably trivially easy for other people to share that sort of thing. Um, let's see. Oh man, this, this is like a societal statement. I should do this at some point. Skinner box, a game where we train humans to do arbitrary tasks in order to get rewards. It'd be like an idle game, but you'd have a bunch of buttons and switches and controls and certain orders would give you more money than others. I think the game should build on itself by slowly adding new controls, but the sequence has changed. So the sequence that gives you $50 is eclipsed by the one that gives you 500. This is <laughs> in essence, you could argue that this is essentially what a lot of games are just Skinner boxes that teach you to press certain buttons in certain orders and you get a certain result and you're happy with that result. But I think it'd be kind of cooler if you had like, you know, a hand crank in the game and you spin it three times to the right and then press a button and you get, you know, hundred dollars and you're like, Oh wow, that's more than what I was getting before. So I'm going to spin this three times and press the button, spin three times, press the button. And then some, whatever, a, a seesaw pops up in the game and you're like, Oh, if I swap it this way and then spin to the left, I, I don't know. Yeah. And then you beat the game and at the end it says, surprise, you were a hamster this whole time. <laughs> That's not written down. Okay, what is this? RPG Racer. Inspired by the ability to pick up coins in Super Mario Kart, what if you could infinitely augment every aspect of your racer? I like the idea of racers running around on foot. There's a race going on, but to win the five laps or whatever, you can't just race. You have to collect power-ups and items. Then you'll zip through the whole course or jump over huge sections. Some race tracks can just be a straight line, but the enemies toward the finish line are so tough that you'll die in one hit if you don't level up. <laughs> Where do these ideas come from? They're all ideas I wrote in my notebook over the last like seven years. And so I'm looking through them now because I just never really end up looking through them and seeing which ones are fun to do. This sounds super fun, by the way. This reminds me a little bit of Kirby Air Ride, which I mean, it makes sense that it would because I played Kirby Air Ride and loved it and I came up with these ideas. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at this one. Ad achievements. It's not even a game. It's literally just a bunch of ads that you watch and get achievements for watching. It's a really dumb idea that I just think would be funny to do as a joke. I bet this could actually earn a decent amount of money. If you got something like, I don't know, maybe there's an AI watching the ads as well. And it summarizes like, watch an ad with uh, four different people in it. And watch an ad that has baseball or something as a main theme. <laughs> so stupid.
It's just so stupid. This is kind of like what mobile games have begun have become to some extent. Like watch ad, be able to play the game, or be able to get some resource in the game. Yeah. Can you use that to train AI to beat CAPTCHA. I wonder if AIs can already beat CAPTCHAs now. What is this? Marble game. Hmm. <laughs> Watch a Toyota ad a hundred times. Yeah. Like when they <laughs> I don't know who would be playing this game and whoever did it just be like straight up money for the creator of such a game. That's why I, I probably shouldn't even be sharing these ideas, but yeah. All right. I think, I think I should go take my break. Yeah. All right. I'll take my break and then when we get back, let's try to figure out which of these games is worth pursuing and see if I like it. And yeah, um, for those who haven't heard me say this already at 3 p.m. today, so right now it is 11. So in four hours, I'm going to be doing the first interview ever on this stream with Amanda. I've got some of her info over here if you want to check this out. Um, and it's just a chat. It's not like a, a technical interview or anything, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be cool to start up the interviewing segment as something I do on stream. We'll just kind of see where it goes. So. I play this game every day. Well, too bad for you. I have YouTube premium. All right. Is it jump time? It's jump time.
Wow, that was pretty close to the end. I happened to catch the end. <clears throat> DGSS asks, what's happening here? So this is Jump Royale. If you type join in chat, you can join. You see it just popped me into the world right here. And then you can type J and a number. So like J and negative 45 will make me jump up into the left. And J and five will make me jump slightly to the right. So you can send these commands in chat and you can jump. And the goal is just jump as high as possible. That's it. I have to turn off my camera so you can actually see behind me. Um, if you've already joined, just type U and you'll be able to see where you are. Is there not a chat cooldown? There is, but you can bypass it. So like U will make you jump up. And then if you need to jump up a second time, you can type something like UA or UB or U, you know, whatever, any garbage afterward. So that way you can input the same command many times. Yeah. All right, close the game. By the way, for people wondering why I say that, that is actually a command to close the game. <laughs> So it's just easier than me having to click the X or switch scenes or something. Mm, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look through the games I had written down and see which one seems like the best one to make. I think it's pretty much between two of these and maybe chat should vote, but maybe not. <laughs> so maybe I'll just have chat vote and we'll just see what you prefer. So top two ideas are uh, stuck in a broken tutorial. This is a like comedic puzzle game with a bit of a storyline, uh, single player. Um, you, you go through broken tutorials to try to figure out how to proceed. The, the puzzles usually play on game tropes somehow. Okay, so that's idea number one. And idea number two is this, um, like, I, I don't know what we'd call this. So let me try to flesh this out to make it at least equally appealing to this. But something like, um, like evolving, evolving RPG, start in a turn-based, manually controlled, RPG and slowly get to the point where you're automating everything like battles, item acquisition, etc. This is probably less story based, still single player. Okay, so now. Gluskup just said, please definitely let us vote. So fine for you, Gluskup. <laughs> I'll definitely let you vote. All right, so which idea sounds better? Stuck in a broken tutorial or... Oh, I can't even fit it. Or uh, evolving RPG. Okay, and again, the ideas are right here. So I'll leave these on screen. Let me make sure they're both visible. So the ideas are here. You can vote for just one of them. And I will start this poll. And Lisa, check out the keyboard command. Hey, Neil Kramer. Second one is just Minecraft. No, the way I'm picturing it is the turn-based manually controlled RPG. Picture like Final Fantasy 1 or picture Dragon Quest or something like that. Um, and, and so it's like you're choosing the attack command. And then slowly over time, you're getting to the point where you're automating all of that. To the point where you're just like, oh, these characters are battling on their own and they're they're doing whatever they need to do. And stuck in a broken tutorial, an example that I had from earlier is, let's say one of the tutorials you're stuck in is a platformer. And you press the jump button and you try jumping over a platform and you can't quite make it. And then you find out like, oh, I'm supposed to hold the jump button and I just like shoot off like I got a jetpack equipped. And like that's how you got past that section of the broken tutorial. And there's like, you know, funny elements around how you did that and what you're figuring out. So what are people voting on here? Uh, very largely the evolving RPG one. Okay. Yeah. What is evolving RPG? Well, I think I said it's, it's the idea that's right here on the screen. Yeah. So I got to say, I wasn't necessarily leaning toward one over the other. So let's kind of plan this one out a little bit more and, and see where this takes us. 
So took votes evolving. Uh, the RPG got 12 votes and the broken tutorial got five. Okay, so now let's plan that out a little bit more. Um, I should probably make a document for that. Like game design planning. Option two will have amazing glitches and constant meta updates. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about that. <laughs> I don't know what you're planning, but this wouldn't be a multiplayer game. So there is still a meta game within single player games, but usually it's more flexible because it doesn't need to be balanced across other players. All right, so let me go make a new document and we will talk about this game. Mm -mm -mm, public design, game design. All right, so here's our new document. Oh, I got to share it first. Hang on a second. Share. Oh, name before sharing. Or what are we calling this? I don't know. Evolving RPG. I need to come up with a better name than that. Okay, so. Update. After two hours of talking about ideas on today. Uh, chat. Voted on one that I'll... Well, I'll, I'll just help further design, further design in this document. There. Okay. So now I'm going to ditch this. We're going to go over to here. Hey, Porteous. I feel like one would be fun for a fresh person playing it for the first time, but not after watching each element being coded. So that's something that I think, <laughs> you know, there's, there is something like you're seeing the game get made, and if it's a puzzle game, then you know the solutions to the puzzles. But you have to imagine that if I were to release the game, the viewership on Twitch would represent, ideally, a small portion of the player base. It does kind of suck, though, that yes, by, by watching me develop it, you're essentially ruining your experience of the game. Because you would have seen all the jokes, you would have seen whatever else. Um, and, and any, how do I say this, like skill-driven or performance-driven game, you don't have that same experience. You can watch someone play Contra all you want, but when you're finally playing it yourself, it's still a fun game, right? You're jumping around, you're shooting stuff. Yeah, less so when you're watching a puzzle game. I guess a good example of that is uh, there's this game called Gorogoa. I think it's a really well-done game. It is like a storybook-style aesthetic, and you get these different panels, and the panels can sort of interact with each other, and depending on the position that you put them in, and so like here you see the shape of this cutout is sort of the same shape over here too. So like maybe you drag this panel over to here and it makes a portal between these two worlds. And so it's like, okay, that's awesome. But now imagine if you watch me develop the whole thing and you're like, oh, I drag this panel over here and I can make a portal between two worlds. Yeah, not as interesting. Pal world reminded me of Botland as the pals are working automatically on stuff. You just have different affinities. Mm, it does make sense. Yeah, I haven't played Pal world pal world yet but i do plan on it okay i made a note that i want to follow here because this is what i tend to do for game design stuff and i wrote a general game design note here so designing a brand new game i think these are good ideas for when you're starting on a brand new game questions to ask uh things to do so this is the part i wanted to pull this up for which is sections to make in a document why are these bullet points all broken general game design they're like super spaced out oh weird Okay, so the sections that we want are these. And I really should just make a template or something at some point. So overview. This is essentially the elevator pitch. So the game is... The game starts as an old school turn-based RPG like Final Fantasy 1. As you play, you unlock more and more automation. Eventually, the game just becomes an incremental game where you don't even see battles play out. And so just some random thoughts here. I guess I'll write it in Scratch. And I like having a questions section and ideas. And then the actual design of the game, anything I've settled on so far. So ideas don't go too heavy on animations. 
if the battles are just going to be cut out eventually anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think this could be pretty neat. So, all right. Let's talk about this. Do I have anything else written down for this? Let me make sure I'm, I've collected all my ideas first before I get into this. Okay, here's everything I had written down. It was just this. So I'm going to close this section over here. All right, so FF1 style RPG slowly becomes fully automated. Maybe start with a party of one to four characters. You have to input menu commands in the usual RPG fare, but slowly you unlock automation for everything. Eventually it just becomes an incremental game where battles don't even play out. Maybe fun to prototype as a web game with only basic graphics. I mean, this doesn't really play in anything. If I'm, oh, I think I know why I wrote this here. Because it would be easier to prototype with like proper, you know, UI language like HTML. I find that using game engine UI languages is sometimes pretty tough. Well, they're not really languages, they're just nodes in a game engine. Battles could start as turn-based or very slow ATB, then go to faster ATB, then get skipped altogether. So is this a good idea? By the way, for those who don't know about ATB, I think it stood for like active time battle or something like that. It's something that at least the term I'm used to is from Final Fantasy VII. And it was a way where it was turn-based, but the turns would get executed as soon as your character was ready. I don't know if that's fun for a game like this because it's not really automating anything. Yeah, I think we should just skip this part. I think they should just be turn-based and you slowly automate stuff. So how do you automate stuff? Yeah. So how does this automation play out? And another question I have is, um, how soon into the game should you get access to this automation? Hey, real chocolate. Reminds me of Dragon Age with a tactics mod. You end up saying like if mage gets enemy aggro, get tank to use taunt. If group of mobs in cluster use AOE spell. Yeah. So, okay. This is, I thought a lot about this sort of thing. And the way I boil all this down to is I think most, most like turn-based RPGs have very simple strategies overall, and they may be hard to write automation for. So for example, like if I'm low on life, if I'm low on life, heal, right? And so that's pretty obvious. Okay, great. But uh, if I'm low on life and the enemy has one hit left, just beat the enemy. Or if I'm low on life and why is this not working? Oh, because I don't have the right profile. If I'm low on life and I don't have potions like have a, a cleric heal me or something like that um the point is it's like look these are pretty obvious things as a player of the game and then automating them is just figuring out the right list of priorities and i feel like once you have that you've essentially made a master script that can control any fight and so i i'm not saying this can't be fun it can be fun and like figuring out that master script could be the fun of it but i've i've thought about this a lot and i just think you know, you could essentially play the game by just looking up all the best scripts online or something. And I don't know, I guess a lot of games work that way where you can just look up the solution online. Have you heard of Stone Story RPG? Has a scripting mechanic to automate fights? Uh, I have not, and I'm happy to look into that, but I want to be clear about the kind of automation I mean here. It's not the you are writing a script kind of automation. It's more like your characters are just doing stuff on their own kind of automation. Auto RPG with strategic combat, deep crafting, and programming elements. Yeah, so programming elements part. I don't know if they show that in here. Do they show that in here? This might be what they're talking about. Yeah. Pretty interesting art style. Stone script. <laughs> That's a good name for it. Yeah, so like... This is cool. I could see a game working like this, but I don't want to do this sort of thing exactly. And so how does this automation play out is a pretty important thing. And I think we'll just kind of analyze this. So how does automation play out? I don't want it to play out with scripting. So it could be, it could be that your characters just become automated. 
and can take actions on their own. E.g. the fighter knows to attack the weakest enemy and the cleric knows to heal the weakest ally. Um, yeah, so let's write out a bunch of ideas here. It could be that you have uh, fuel for scripts or for, for automation that slowly burns down. So you're collecting more of this fuel at first. Hey, Syntonic. By the way, Syntonic, the first interview was today at uh, 3 p.m. my time. So about three and a half hours from now, uh, if you want to check it out and see what your potential interview will be like. <laughs> Somewhere like X patrol Y area character gathers resources. I'm not sure. That's another question I need to figure out is like what other systems are at play here? Um, movement, crafting, exploration, uh, buying and selling. What else did I have in that first document, by the way? No, I didn't write anything else. Okay. So like assign roles slash jobs. Uh, could be. I was kind of thinking about that originally, the assigned roles thing. But it could play out any number of ways. I have some ideas about this too. Surprised how well it does shell scripting. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to get it to make a command at some point for something complex and it couldn't do it. But for the easier stuff, it was doing a pretty good job. Maybe items have different combinations of actions, both positives and negatives. Um, well, let me, okay. Let me continue along this. So. What are these scripts or rewards and items that you get as you play the game and you equip them to the character? You want to have that automation? I think that could also be interesting. But one of the things that I'm kind of considering here is that the, the game has like phases to it. So if you think about it, this phase one is everything is manual. Hey, Redux. Phase two is some things are manual. Phase three is everything is automated. And phase four is battles cease to play out and uh the, the game becomes an idle game and so how long are you in each of these phases and if you're eventually getting to the point where you've ceased playing out battles then the automation actually doesn't matter as much anymore at that point it just becomes like a stats battle like your party fought another party you win every single fight that you play uh and yeah i don't know i haven't looked into devon yet so i can't really comment on that New weapons can be created by merging two weapons or items. It depends on area, time, other in-game variables. Yeah, I think you could take this game in that direction. You could say like it's an item-heavy game. I, I think the fusing concept is something you'd probably also want to automate at some point. Yeah, anyway, I'll write this down though. So uh, items could act as automation points. E.g. you get a fighter helm that just tells your character to attack over and over. The more automated it gets, it would need to have speed control. Yeah, I think so. I think that's kind of the idle part of this playing out is like your characters are getting into fights, you know, once per second and then 10 times per second and then 100 times per second or something like that. But all you're really seeing is just kind of numbers going up at that point. And I'm not even sure if this is a good idea at the end of all of this. Maybe we stop at phase three. Like, is 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 this even a good phase to get to? And it depends on how interesting the battles are. So this kind of goes back to that Godot game that I was showing, which unfortunately the graphics are broken for. But um, <laughs> it's hard to show off with the broken graphics. But these characters are moving around the map and they're getting into battles automatically. And the battles are playing out with like actual kind of physics rules. You see these particles bouncing around and hitting the enemies. Like, and there are obstacles that they're bouncing off of, but that's not as obvious. And I can speed up the battles by just checking this box over here. I don't know if there's a way to exit this battle, but there was a way to add a new character. So let's add a new character 
where are where is that new character there they are yeah so like this was a like a weird little shield thing that could stop projectiles or hurt enemies or something so you got a bunch of different little ways that this could play out the game is like lagging already <laughs> i would need to make this more performant but that's one way that this could work what language or tools do I use in game development? I, I've been using Godot, and that particular thing was in Godot, but that wasn't something I actually did on stream. Um, yeah, so is this even a good phase to get to? So how does automation play out? How soon should you get access? And if we think of this as having this many phases, we think of having these phases... Which phase should we stop at? Phase four is like a whole different game. Okay, so it could be that your characters have become automated and take actions on their own. Could be that you have fuel for the automation. Could be that you have items that act as the automation point. And, and by the way, this played into the whole what phase do you end at? Because if we're stopping battles eventually, with any sort of automation game, all you need is for the automation to be good enough and for you to have as much time as you need. Excuse me. So with any automation game like this, you just need the automation to be good enough. Then you just need time for it to play out. And I, I guess that's kind of the core of an idle game. Shield thing around the character reminded me of Vampire Survivors, yeah. Yeah, it is very similar to that, especially because of the graphic it used. I think it was the holy water that gave it to you in Vampire Survivors, but that graphic was not what was supposed to be used. <laughs> it's just messed up because I have the wrong graphics from what I used originally. All right, so yeah, the automation needs to be good enough. And I feel like this is a core part of a game like this, which is if you get it to the point where it's good enough and then it's really slow, you might be like, oh, I don't really want to optimize this. And then it kind of becomes an optimization game anyway. Which is like, well, okay, I'm winning three battles on my different parties. How do I get more parties or how do I get more characters? Yeah, how do you scale up? I think the scaling is important, like getting more characters, uh, forming more parties, uh, forming bigger parties. Yeah, is there a prestige mechanic? So I had this, I had an idea a long time ago. Imagine, let's just pull up a skill tree here so I can show you something. Diablo 2 skill tree. Imagine a skill tree like in D2. Okay, so here's the assassin skill tree. You, how do we open this? All right, so any of these are buttons and you need to work your way down them. If you played any game with a skill tree, it's like any other skill tree you've seen. So I can put a point into here and then that allows me to put a point into here and then I can't put anything into this one until I've gotten this tree. So what I thought would be kind of cool is uh, by the way, prestige mechanic for a lot of these games is you get to some sort of level and then you can sort of revert yourself back to the beginning and you keep some benefit from having gotten to the higher level. And so the problem with a game like this is if you had a prestige mechanic, you're like, okay, I clicked this button 20 times. I have 20 points into this skill and now 20 points into this skill. And now you prestige and this skill tree gets wiped out. And so that, what if you automated the allocation of points? Or what if your prestige mechanic just lets you get points into different trees altogether? And you just kept the ones that were there to begin with. Actually, that's that's pretty cool. So you're essentially filling out everything. And it's just a question of how you're doing that. I kind of like that idea. How do skills work? Are they chosen? Innate? All right, so in ideas, we'll say uh, it could be neat to have a prestige mechanic where you keep all of your skill points allocated as they were and just start getting new ones. That way each character is getting more powerful. Uh, yeah, what is what is the party size? <clears throat> or the maximum party size? And is is there any problem with i guess like power leveling all right 
So yeah, going back to how automation plays out, um, I think at the end of all of this, I, I guess even what are the what are the manual actions you're choosing? What are the manual actions you're choosing? So in Final Fantasy One, I, I think you had four actions you could take. Not that it matters really, but it was like attack, spell, item, and run. Maybe there was a defend in there. I don't know. I think it was just these four though. And like I said, it was just the A button simulator. Most of your characters were going to attack most of the time. Occasionally you'd cure yourself. Occasionally you'd use a fire spell or something. You'd very rarely use items and you'd very rarely run. And so the strategy wasn't really that in depth. And I almost wonder, like, does the strategy of the actual fights matter? And also, if it doesn't matter, then is the only point of having manual action so that you can eventually feel like, cool, I automated that. I don't need to do that again. Maybe when you lose a run, you can select some rewards for the next run. I'd like this to be, so this is not something I talked about, but I'd like this to be kind of a chill game where you, you don't lose. You just make progress slower. I think, I think that'd be kind of nice. I'd like this to be a game where you don't exactly lose. You just gain progress slower. A sense of accomplishment when automating it. I think you'd get a sense of accomplishment if it was difficult to automate. So if it was literally just like, hey, fighter uses attack and the cleric casts heal every once in a while, then I don't think that feels good to automate. And that's where I was kind of thinking like, I don't know how much the battle strategy really matters. So yeah, what are the manual actions you're choosing? How does this automation play out? Is the battle strategy even important? And maybe it's not. Lose slowly. You mean win slowly. <laughs> there is no losing. <clears throat> so a lot of these questions are intertwined. And, and this is something that I hit quite a lot when I'm doing this sort of thing. And so I actually, I think I wrote this down. No, this is, did I write this down? yeah i said start jotting down any concrete system that will satisfy a game design need so we're at a point now where i can't figure out any of these systems so let's just pick one and then see what it looks like to have designed using that i think this is a pretty good strategy so let's see um is battle strategy even important let's 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 tackle this as a standalone question because i want to kind of play this out a little bit so if the point of the game is to eventually automate it out, then it's probably not all that important. However, for the time that you're manually choosing actions, it has to be interesting enough, which implies enough, which implies having enough of a choice to to make a difference in battle yeah okay so i'm i'm picturing you're moving around in this world you get into a fight. It's some random thing that happens because, I mean, the whole thing's based around fighting. So, yeah, you eventually get into a fight. The fight plays out automatically. Or, no, sorry, it plays out manually at first. You're choosing actions for your team. And, yeah, I don't see these actions being important at the beginning. In a lot of games where you start out, you have some very basic set of things you can do, like attack or heal spell or fire spell or something like that. And the way that you get any sort of intrigue in combat is by having enough choices and then meaningful choices. So fire spell would have to be like, well, this does zero damage against fire attuned enemies or something like that. Uh, and if you don't have this choice, then it's just like, well, just always use fire spell, right? And once the battles are automated completely, none of this really matters because you're not, you're not playing this out yourself. 
Actually, there was a mobile game that was just released. Final Fantasy VII mobile game. What was it called? Ever Crisis, maybe? It was probably Ever Crisis. And I, they had this setting. You could just turn on automated battles. Is that the game I'm thinking of? Automated battles. Yeah, I think it was that. Repositioning players, which could prioritize actions, and some actions could have AoE damaging team members. Um, okay, yeah. So I think this is this is I think one of the key issues here, right? Which is that we're eventually phasing out all of whatever you're doing manually. So if there is positioning, it's like this positioning isn't going to matter at whatever time you get to the point where you've like even half automated the game. And I feel like you should probably get to that automation pretty quickly. So th this is, let, let's picture like reality number one. Uh, you're in the manual phase for three hours. In this reality, battles need to be interesting for you to want to do them. And in reality number two, you're in the manual phase for 10 minutes. In this reality, you almost want battles to be tedious to encourage you to automate them out. And given, okay, so I think, I think I'm kind of answering my own question here. I think I want to shift more toward reality too, which is that you're not manually controlling things for very long in the game. It almost makes me wonder, is there a point having it at all? But that was like the core of this game. Yeah. I'm leaning more toward reality number two, which would mean very basic battling. And in the very basic battle case, it's like, are you, are you eventually, is everything automated and you're seeing it? I feel like it's more interesting to see this stuff play out. I think the whole battle cease to play out part. It's just not as interesting. I think the battles can still have strategy. Factor is like that too. Beginning can be tedious. Yeah, and I think a lot of automation games, that's what makes it satisfying to get to that. Would the battle strategy ever not be important? Well, that's what I was wondering about, right? I've got these phases here. It starts out, everything is manual. Then some things are manual. Then everything is automated. And then is there a level beyond that where it's like the battles aren't even important anymore? So in a lot of idle games, you get to the point where it's like, it's just enemies appear on the screen, they die instantaneously, and it's like, you got plus one trillion gold. And that just keeps happening over and over and over. And now you got plus, you know, 1E17 gold. <laughs> so I think in a game where the point is to automate this out, and it's not to script it yourself, that the strategy wouldn't actually be the interesting part. And so if the strategies aren't interesting, then what's the, yeah, what's the interesting part of the game? If it's not important, then what is the interesting part of the game? And I like gut feeling here is optimizing your progress. Mobile, which was a tower defense, similar to reality number two with a bit of intervention. I think, did I play that game? Is that the one with a very green aesthetic? I think I played this and I think the green aesthetic I'm thinking of is um, the world map. No, I played something that looked a lot like this. It might have been this. No, I'm, I'm mixing this up with another game, but I think I might have also played this one. This was uh, this was very strange. I, I'm kind of torn on mobile games to begin with. But if I recall correctly, this had some like very expansive skill tree. And that's where the idleness came in. You like farmed levels and then you had to expand your skill tree. But then resources, it got to the point where it was like it was way too hard to get them. I want to make this be like a one-time payment kind of game. You know, you spend $3 and uh, you get access to this game. And it's balanced around you having spent the money once which I think is sort of 
counter to how idle games work because idle games are usually infinite games and the satisfying part is feeling like you're cheating infinity somehow by going at you know 10x or 100x the pace but it doesn't matter because you're marching toward nothing <sighs> yeah so bring up some interesting design challenges for sure game changes over time but it's riskier universal paper clips i think does it well Maybe something like sport into it as well. I think I played the paperclips game. And I did not play Spore, so I don't know how that changed. Made a simple idle game as well a few years back. Yeah, I think it's an interesting genre to explore. Because, like I said, I think here's what I see as the idle genre. Idle genre to me is player psychology exploitation. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. It's like progress feels good uh, progress is unbounded and progress and usually this is the case progress can be sped up with real money somehow that's how i think of the whole genre so what i want to turn on its head a little bit is this part at least like there is no real money payment so is the game still fun Reminds me of the game Rail Route, which I enjoy, but it did feel like in the early game, it's a different game than the end game. Could still work. Yeah, I think this would be a different game. And I think it's it's only in this first phase for a little bit. And it needs to be done well. Doesn't Paperclips have an ending, though? It might. I don't remember. I don't know if I got through the whole thing. And this part isn't actually all that important. There could be an end to this game, too. And I don't actually mind that. I should probably write that down here. Does the game have an end? I feel like it should, since this isn't a typical idle game with unbounded progress. Yeah, I feel like it should. I think that's pretty important too. And in fact, I'm just gonna write that here. It's That's something we're gonna seal in the design. Uh, gameplay, the game does have a an end to it perhaps a final I, I don't know what it is yet i don't know what it is yet maybe it's a quest or item you obtain it doesn't have unbounded progress since i only want people to have to pay for it once as opposed to having in-game in-game what are they called um I guess just transactions or payments. New game plus. New game plus sort of thing is fine. I don't, I don't think that's a problem. I just, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to go on infinitely. Like I, some games kind of do new game plus as a sandbox mode. Uh, what was that thing called? Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy 2. I think it had some amount of content in the new game plus. And then eventually it just got harder and harder and harder. And I don't know if there was an end to that. I mean, maybe there was. Maybe I'm thinking of Rogue Legacy 1. I don't know if there was an end to that one. And yeah, eventually it turned into like, you just can't even kill enemies anymore. They're just too powerful. There's nothing you can do. And I don't mind having that be a thing where it's like, okay, if you really want to push this, try pushing it. But it's like, we don't optimize the game for that. So yeah, I like that. That's a That's an answered question. Um, I, I think the conclusion is the interest doesn't come from battling. It comes from something else. And I don't know what the something else is. And maybe, maybe this is where some of the automation comes in. Maybe it's like your characters are, no, they can't be automated by default. Could they? Maybe they could be. No, I don't think it should be. I think, I think it could be something where. Each character has a small number of actions and you control which actions in the automation. That could be the item thing, yeah. There could be a feeling slash or like, like mixed I guess hybrid staff. Yeah, there could be like role based gear. There could be role or skill based gear that gives your character the ability to use different 
actions or to take different actions. This brings me to another thing that I did not write here. Could be that your characters just become automated, take actions on their own. Could be they have fuel. Could be that there are items. And it could be that you have a skill tree controlling this. Okay. I think I want to go with this last one. And I think this is the idea. So here's what I'm thinking. You start, you know, you have a fighter and it has a skill that's attack and it has something that's like, I don't know, um, you know, rallying cry raises attack power of your whole party. And then you have whatever. I'm just making something up really fast here. You have cleric, which also has attack and it has heal, heals some HP. And then you get a skill tree for these things. So the fighter's skill tree would be um, like 25% chance to automate automatically take action. And and this levels up itself. And this is like the first thing that you get in each skill tree. And then you start unlocking new skills. So there could be something like, whatever, I'm just, I'm not trying to be creative here. Holy Bolt, like 50 damage to enemy, 100 to undead or 100 if undead, something like that. Um, and by unlocking this, your character may use this skill when appropriate. One could run a lot of games, then tweak some parameter like hit points and run again. I think that could be interesting. I think a lot of how you've got to balance a single player game is based on how people, like how they play it and not necessarily what's possible because you, you have all these different types of players who will play your game. There's going to be someone who's like, you know what, I'm going to treat this casually. I'm just going to play for fun. Uh, and there's going to be someone who's like, I'm focusing on this game. I'm going to optimize this. I'm going to find what the best actions are. It's, and they'll see this sort of thing and they'll be like, whoa, automate my actions. Yeah, whoa, I'm going to max this out as soon as possible. Also kind of makes me think there should be an active time system for this. Okay, what if there were both, both of these things? Although I don't want to get to more complexity here. But yeah, what if there were also, or no, maybe you could just turn on and off skills. Maybe you can just turn skills on and off in your skill tree and it would enable or disable your character, that character from using that skill. So I think party formation would be fun. I think these skill trees would be fun. Could be party formation. Could be the skill trees of individual characters. Yeah, and could be strategies that play out based on areas that you're in. E.g. maybe there's a cemetery that you fight in where you want Holy Bolt equipped on your clerics. Multiple skill trees, now we're talking. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess you can kind of think of multiple skill trees in a couple of different ways, which is why I hesitated there. But if we go look at Diablo 2, every character had three skill trees. Skill trees. Every character had three, and they were distinct from one another. And if you look at something like Path of Exile, it is like a giant web. And so you can, it's all one tree. Every Any two nodes in this are connected. It's just they're connected by varying length paths and I, I don't know if you consider this to be multiple skill trees but it kind of is so i don't know which way i would use necessarily last epic skill tree what do they use for theirs i guess we can just go to the build planner thing right I've never played this game, so I don't know what we're looking at here, but uh, skills. Okay, so you could have five skills and I see each one of these was a web within itself. 
Interesting. Yeah. So for this, this is kind of what I'm thinking. You do something like this. And so your characters will be a little bit different. It'd be kind of interesting. I just thought of an idea. Idea could be cool to have items that automatically place a skill point somewhere in your tree. I guess it would have to, well, this would have lots of balance considerations. E.g. if skills get enabled slash disabled, then you wouldn't want this putting a point in a new skill that you don't want to use. You also wouldn't want it to only put points into skills that you've unlocked since you'd max them faster. Also, another idea. Prestige. Could be neat to unlock higher maximums for your skills. E.g. on cycle zero, you have a max of five. Then you get to a max of 10, then 20, then 50, etc. What am I going to build the game with? I have not decided yet. I don't know yet. So welcome to the stream, by the way. I will probably just continue to design this for a bit and then, and then make sure that I'm kind of set on the idea. So the, the phases I kind of look at for here is we're doing very initial design of like broad ideas. Also, we're running out of time of broad ideas. And then we're going to narrow down on a more concrete design. And then I think we need to probably try prototyping the idea and see if it's fun. And then figure out how we'll, how we'll like properly make this. So this is what I see as the, I should probably write this up here, uh, note, I guess like notes to stream audience. I haven't picked a game engine or language for this yet. I'm still focusing on the design itself. We'll probably prototype the idea before settling on the like the final engine that I want to use. Yeah. Okay, do I know click apocalypse? I think I might have seen that. I don't know. I think I've played this. Yeah, I think I played this. I don't remember a lot about this. I don't remember a lot. Unlocking skills would unlock skins for that character. Uh, that's something that I don't really have an opinion about, I guess. I could just say ideas, co cosmetics for characters. Maybe based on prestiging. Yeah. I like this idea of forming a party, though. In fact, I think that's one of the coolest parts of Final Fantasy 1. Do they have a character select? They have a screen I can show you for this. Yeah, this one. So remember, this is NES. This is what, 1988, I want to say? Final Fantasy 1? 1987. Although I'm guessing in... The US, it came out later. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, 1987. So a long time ago now. <laughs> this is what the party selection screen looked like. And I think you had six choices. Fighter, Thief, Black Belt, Red Mage, White Mage, Black Mage. So three kinds of mages and then these three characters. And I, I don't know how many, you know, combinations of that you can make. But you could have like Fighter, 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 for example. And some people did that sort of thing. They like these sorts of challenge runs where you don't have any mages or you only have White Mages or something. And I definitely think this should be part of the initial... The initial setup of the game. 
20 years wasn't that long ago. It was more than 20 years. <laughs> That's what, 37? <laughs> Yeah, I like the idea of starting and picking out your uh, starting out. You pick a character class. You pick at least one character class to start with. Possibly multiple to fill out a party. Yeah. Okay, um, we're getting close to lunchtime for me. I want to talk about some other stuff here. And I'm very happy with how the stream went. I want to be making a game. And I only just realized this, I don't know when, like in the last week. And so I'm glad we're designing something. And I like, even let's say this idea sucks and I hate it. We had the other idea that we could use, which I know not as many people voted for, but the uh, stuck in a broken tutorial. I want to make this game at some point. So I will probably do that at some point too. Um, anyway, here's what I'm thinking. So today, <clears throat> morning is essentially done. And now in the afternoon, there are going to be a couple things. One, I have not done this in a long time, group mentoring. So that's going to be about two hours in the afternoon. And for those who haven't seen this, this is pretty much just like, ask me anything about software engineering. And so if you want to ask career stuff, if you want to ask specific little tech stuff, you can do that. That's the time to do it. <clears throat> and then at 3 p.m., so three hours from now, because I think it's noon. Yeah. At 3 p.m., I'm going to do the first ever on-stream interview with Amanda. Uh, I've shared the information on Discord if you want to go check that out. And you can post questions there too if you want to. This is going to be about an hour long. And it's mostly a chat. It's not like a mock interview or a tech interview or anything like that. She is a software engineer at Microsoft. She's also a content creator. I think it's going to be cool to just chat, have a conversation, figure out how this goes, see how people like interviews. Um, I'm really excited about this. I, I also don't know how chat will feel during this. So I've done mentoring on stream before, like one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and chat usually dies during that. And that's fine. I'm talking to a specific person about their struggles. And it might be applicable to people, but it isn't always a one-to-one -one sort of thing. But with the interview, this is more of a conversation. And yet I still am probably not going to be reading chat during it. I think it's pretty hard to focus on an interview and like, you know, paying attention, giving your attention to them, and then also reading chat and taking all of that into account. So please be honest with me about how you like the, the interview section of the stream. You can share any feedback you have on Discord. And the beginning of it is just going to be the um, the group mentoring stuff. Ask me anything about Sweden. What's your favorite thing about Sweden? Probably the software engineers. <laughs> really suggest people watch them on YouTube. Yeah, for anyone who is interested in that content, by the way, I have it all here. This is all in the schedule thing. All of these blue cells are links to a YouTube video that had this session. So if you want to see how any of these have played out, it's all on a separate channel. I'm going to put the interviews on my main channel, Adam Learns, and we'll see how this all goes. Yeah. Imagine having staff pick good comments to read at the end or whatever. Yeah, I want to eventually have a system like that. For now, it's just going to be over Discord. Like any questions you have, you can post in here. And I guess as the interview is playing out, you can post them as well. And I'll hopefully take a look at this before the end of the, the end of the session. Mine's also Daniel Stenberg. Wow, what a coincidence. Yeah. Anyway, I'm excited about that. So that's today. And then Thursday, we have changed up what's happening so that now it's going to be a Discord co-working session. I'll share the details of this tomorrow, but I think it's just going to be like, we hang out, we're not talking to each other. And if you want to type to each other, you can, but it'll be like a low distraction, high productivity environment. If that sounds like your kind of thing, definitely join me. And then on Friday, we'll continue the design of this game and also do some code reviews that people have submitted. So people can submit code. If you also want to submit your code, you can code review. And that's probably what we'll do. And then in the coming, I guess, weeks, we'll shift from design to development and we'll start working on this game. 
So as far as I'm concerned, there's actually like a plan now. <laughs> we're going to see how this stuff goes. I'm going to still weave in the original content that we were doing. So there'll still be mentoring. If the interviews go well, we'll do more interviews. Um, actually, regardless of how they go, I'm going to do more interviews. But then if after three or four chat is like, you know what, this, this isn't really what we wanted to see, then I don't know, maybe I change it around a bit. So I'm excited. I hope you're excited. I've had a good time on the stream. I will be back in about an hour. Like I said, it's about noon right now. So at about one, I'll be back. And then at three, we will do uh, the interview. So if you have any sorts of software engineering questions or tech questions or anything like that, feel free to come back at one and we can have a chat about it. That is it for now. I will run my, what is it? Change OBS scene to outro. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in about an hour. Take care.